I'd like to say I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Because <laughs> for an entire video, three and a half hours, I may have mispronounced Colleen Ballinger's name. And I'm really, really, really. Nothing's coming I'm out. I'm trying to say I'm sorry. All right. And if you can't forgive me, well, that seems like a you problem. And uh, if, you, if you can forgive me, well, you know, please subscribe because I'm trying to hit a million subs. Thank you very much. Look, ladies and gentlemen, things over the last few weeks have, <laughs> well, I'd say they've gotten a little bit uh, heated. I'd say things, it's like a fire getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But ladies and gentlemen, it's like Mount Doom had a nuclear bomb sent in it and it exploded. And then four other nuclear bombs were sent into Mount Doom. This has just gotten absolutely out of hand. And yes, of course, we are speaking about the Colleen Ballinger situation because over the last few weeks, ever since my three and a half hour documentary about this whole situation, things have only gotten so unbelievably worse. The internet right now is an absolute war zone. And the kind of particular thing which is interesting me right now is the fact that when we first went into the situation, we were saying, this is a very inappropriate person who's committed a lot of bad actions and they should face repercussions for those actions too. Oh my god, you, you probably should actually be going to jail. You should be going to jail, sunshine. I seriously don't understand what is <laughs> what is wrong with you, Colleen. There are so many things that we are going to have to go through in today's video, and I put up a community post being like, how long do you think this video is going to be? Truth be told, I actually don't know how long this video is going to be, but we're going to have to take this as like the part two to the downfall of Colleen Ballinger. Because, ladies and gentlemen, things aren't just getting worse, but we're just going to actually have to call the federal agents in at this point, because... What is going on? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so firstly, we need to take a look at the aftermath of what actually happened after Colleen Ballinger did the most ironic thing and responded to child grooming allegations with a... <laughs> <laughs> nursery rhyme. Yes. It... <laughs> I still don't actually know why she did this. I, I would like some clarification from Colleen Ballinger. I, I know everyone right now wants Colleen to upload a video, and maybe at this point of time when this video is being released, she actually has. But people at the point of me making this video have been begging Colleen to make a video explaining all of the things of Adam McIntyre and all of the allegations. But personally, I think I want an individual video to explain what was going on in like the four brain cells in this individual's mind, which convinced them that this would be a good idea. She said in this video, my lawyers have advised against this. Maybe, Colleen, take some advice for once in your life. But yes, what I'm trying to say here is after the worst apology of all time, Colleen has been losing subscribers, followers at a monumental speed. It is absolutely wild to see that somebody could lose their platform so quickly overnight, and it's hard to say that this isn't justified. And this apology is now actually becoming one of the most disliked apologies of all time. It now has over... 1 million dislikes, and it kind of seems that Colleen doesn't have any area of the internet where she can go to without facing some form of criticism at this point. And again, it, it's it's a pretty justified thing, given absolutely everything that we went through in my three-hour video. And naturally, with all of that, with all the people like myself speaking about this situation, it has actually prompted some of the people in Colleen's life to come out and speak about this stuff. And one of those people is actually the ex-husband of Colleen Ballinger, because because yes, the ex-husband has been heavily involved in this situation so far, with Colleen going into group chats and obviously discussing her divorce with her uh, 14 to 17 year old fans in group chats. This is something that she for some reason did. I don't actually know why, but she definitely did these in, in, in long rants in these group chats. It's one of the more confusing things. And obviously, the ex-husband has finally seen this stuff and decided to come out. And no, he isn't gay because Pride Month was last month. And as you all know, gay people could only exist during June. <laughs> But Josh, who is Colleen's ex-husband, has actually come out and spoke against Colleen amidst all of the drama and situations involving those two. And honestly, that is a little bit strange when you actually look into the history of Colleen Ballinger and Josh, because at one point of time, their relationship was regarded as couple goals. I feel like I went into a bit of a Shane Dawson-esque thing there. 
We'll never do that again, but they were regarded as couple goals. Jocelyn was what people used to call it back in the fan base of Colleen Ballinger when she actually had fans. People really looked up to these two. People thought, wow, these two are the ideal relationship, the ideal marriage. And if I ever get a lovely husband or wife, I would love to have that level of relationship until, well, you saw everything that came out on the internet, and obviously, it is very strange to look back at nowadays considering everything that we know. People at one point of time were so engrossed in the dynamic of Colleen and Josh that there was even weird fan accounts which I found uh, celebrating Jocelyn in rather particularly creepy ways where they're posting a lot of NSFW stuff about the couple and just in general, very inappropriate ways which really do exemplify the kind of dynamic between Colleen and her fan base. Her fans at one point of time were very comfortable sexualizing people in that whole, I, I, I guess, group, the Ballinger group, Colleen, her husband, and that's obviously because of Colleen's actions and how she has cultivated her audience, which we went through in the last video. But what I'm trying to say here is it's very strange to now see that Josh is now turning against Colleen, given how at one point of time they were so absolutely beloved to a point of where this actually exists. But yes, Josh went on to Twitter to air his thoughts about the entire situation and pretty much just outright completely denounce Colleen. But before we even go through that thread, I want to play to you a clip that Colleen herself posted during the era of around 2016 of when her and Josh Josh announced that they were getting a divorce. I know a lot of you are going to be really disappointed and really mad and really hurt by this because you do feel so close to us and you looked up to our relationship and to our love and so this is going to be confusing and hard for a lot of you and I totally get that. But please, please don't. Please don't be mean to him. He didn't do anything to deserve that. He's hurting and this is really, really painful and the last thing either one of us needs is people attacking us when we are just completely devastated right now. So please be respectful. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the sheer nature of this clip is quite confusing to look back at, considering how in this clip she's like, please don't attack Josh, she seems very devastated, she just seems upset, but when you then go and find out what was also going on at that period of time or shortly after that video, she was in group chat saying things like this to young fans. It's very confusing to see the sheer uh, contrast between this video and these DMs. And obviously this behavior is extremely hypocritical and I've seen a lot of Colleen fans defend this behavior being like, oh, she was just, you know, trying to make it publicly look fine and yeah, we all say things differently behind closed doors. And, and yeah, usually I would take that excuse, you know, sometimes I'll think this YouTuber is an absolute bellend, but to you guys I'll be like, oh yeah, they're all right to, to, to not cause any drama because I, I, I've, I've got myself a life. I, I would not like to be in, in the spotlight constantly where I'm beefing with this YouTuber and that YouTuber. Sometimes you're going to tell nice little white lies, but this isn't a white lie. This is just an outright lie because behind closed scenes, she was still speaking to the same fans that she was speaking to in that video, saying horrible things about her ex-husband. And these things that she was saying in these clips became rumors that were naturally spread by these young fans because they probably thought being young and impressionable, being the type of fan that wants to impress somebody that they're a fan of, they went around saying nasty things about Colleen's ex-husband Josh, which became very vicious rumors. It really doesn't take many searches to find some of the things said about Josh because of what Colleen was saying to fans behind the scenes. And then that brings us to 2023, where Josh clearly found out only recently about the ongoings of what his ex-wife was saying about him, and obviously he was not happy about this, because one, it's extremely hypocritical, but two, it explains a lot of the vicious rumors out there about him. And I should just say, I don't know the ins and outs of their relationship, but it's very clear to me that Colleen has done some damage, quite a lot of damage in fact, and obviously Josh was not happy about that. Joshua tweeted saying, Anyone feeling hurt and gassed at right now, my message to you is this. Your experiences were real. The proof is there. Your trauma should be taken seriously. The proof is there. Your anger is justified. The proof is there. You deserve better. Take your power back. 
sending you love. Now, yeah, everything in this post is obviously absolutely spot on, and honestly, it's quite sad that we even need to say these things, but sadly, we do need to say these things, because even to this day, a lot of the victims in this situation are just being ignored, saying, oh, Colleen Ballinger's intentions weren't bad, she was just in a weird spot with fans, and I, I, I really don't know how that's some form of justification or excuse for Colleen's actions, but it's something that has been said quite a lot, so I can completely understand why Josh of all people seems the need to take this stance and I think this tweet really does to show that this isn't online drama anymore. People in Colleen's personal life have been dragged into all of this and are clearly hurting. Because ladies and gentlemen when you treat people terribly in your life, in particular when you're somebody with a massive platform who's using that platform to pretty much spread horrible rumours about people, you just need to realise that that's probably going to come back to bite you in the ass. but not just a bite. Again I don't know why I keep mentioning nukes Maybe it's because this world currently is on the cusp of nuclear war, but it's like your, your, your whole platform is going to get nuked by yourself. It's a self-destruction. Some would say a self-implosion. Did you know there was a submarine that went missing the other week? What? What? Nah, I never knew that. I'm a bit late to that one, I know. But yes, it only continues where Josh made another tweet saying he has no desire to use this as a cataclyst for a YouTube comeback. It's not a safe place for me. I'm past that. My voice is only here to help validate those that are hurting. Nothing more. And you know what? I think this is a pretty respectable thing to say in this situation because honestly, he could actually, as he said, use this situation as a cataclyst to come back to social media and build kind of like a comeback a new start to his career and get views from the situation quite like I'm doing. I'm joking. Obviously, it's a bit different with him as he literally was a personal connection to Colleen. And I think it's admirable that he isn't going to take advantage of the situation and instead just tweet his thoughts and feelings. And after this tweet, it's when we really get into the more telling stuff, the more condemning stuff when it comes to making Colleen look even worse. This behavior, as in Colleen's, was my reality anytime I spoke spoke up and disagreed with her actions and rhetoric during 2009 and 2016. I was gaslit too. I was made to feel like I was always the problem. Any pain I felt was an inconvenience and was belittled. Every ounce of what you're feeling, I understand. Now firstly, my brothers, sisters and sisters, obviously this tweet looks incredibly bad on Colleen and the thing is with this video, I am just starting off with the lighter stuff until we get into the absolutely terrible terrible stuff, but this tweet alone makes Colleen look a thousand times worse. When you go and look at some of the messages sent in the weenies chat from Colleen and just correlate them with this tweet, it really starts to line up with how badly Colleen was treating people. For example, one of the messages that Colleen sent was, it makes no sense. He tries to get pity for being heartbroken over me, but he constantly tries to drag me through the mud. You can't be heartbroken over somebody you hate, so which is is it? Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, you absolutely can be heartbroken over somebody that you now hate or dislike. I think if, if anybody's been for a bad breakup, you probably know that feeling quite well, and it's quite insane that Khalid even tried to suggest to her fans that this isn't a possible thing, but we know why she is doing that, especially when you take a look at the tweet that we read previously of where Josh is saying that whenever he would be sad or air his feelings, he would be gaslit and pretty much things would be spun in a bad way, and that's exactly what Colleen was doing in this message. She was obviously taking his feelings, where he's sad and upset during this divorce, and making it sound so much worse, almost malicious, to her own fans. It wasn't like she was just speaking to Trisha Paytas, a friend, and being like, oh, he's such a dick, I hate him, because that's something people do. But what people don't do is they don't go into group chats with their fans and tell their fans lies, speculation, rumours, and horrible things about their ex-husbands. Not only was Colleen being absolutely horrible, but she was also starting to spread nasty rumours about Josh. Because ladies and gentlemen, YouTubers, surprisingly enough, even though they bring out the ukuleles, oh, aren't stupid. They know that their words have impact, and they know that their super fans will do absolutely anything that they think 
think that will possibly benefit their connection between the fan and the YouTuber. So by her saying these things, she knows that she is going to get this spread around the community like some vicious little rumor, but then she can kind of pretend being like, oh, well, I didn't say it in a video, I didn't say it publicly, and she can kind of pretend that she didn't even say these things, which obviously we know she did for years until it was exposed, and I think that is why Josh is coming out about this, because obviously he feels betrayed, not just because of all of Colleen's other terrible actions, but she has also personally betrayed him, and it's just another example of how malicious this person is. She was being malicious to people that she didn't know, but also people who were meant to be her friends and family. And ladies and gentlemen, this is just the beginning of the rabbit hole when it comes to Colleen mistreating people in her personal life. But I also should just say, I by no means know anything to do with Josh personally, I've never spoken to the guy, I don't know whether he's a good person or a bad person, and in fact, even right now, Josh himself has recently been embroiled in controversy after he issued an apology towards somebody who was also involved in a situation which will come up later in this video, but the fact of the matter is, practically every single situation that we could speak about involving this circle of people always seems to go back to Colleen. Something that she said in the group chat, a rumor that she started, some bad immoral thing that Colleen herself did, it all circulates back to her, regardless if somebody was in the wrong or if somebody else was in the right. Colleen Ballinger, it just seems, is addicted to being the wrong in practically every single situation. I like to believe that there is like some form of moral code of ethics when it comes to influencers. Obviously, don't DM underage fans. Well, that's just a code of ethics for anybody, but you know what I mean. But it seems that with those ethics, she just continuously breaks every single rule. But ladies and gentlemen, like literally everything in this situation, it only gets worse. Because shortly after this, Adam McIntyre, one of the main people in this situation, saw Josh's statements and thanked him for this. And Josh responded with saying that he's 100% with Adam and standing by him in this situation. And then somebody who I think is a Colleen stan or somebody who is at least against Josh, responded by saying, LMAO, not Josh. Didn't you like reuse Colleen's wedding ring and were an alcoholic? Please, goodbye. Ah yes, uh, that old chestnut, the one where you don't actually have any argument whatsoever, so instead you'll bring up somebody's addiction issues and use that as a way to belittle them for absolutely no reason whatsoever and the context does not apply to anything in this tweet. Sure. But the reason I'm showing you this tweet right now is because once again, apparently, this is yet again another vicious rumor about Josh, which apparently originates from Colleen Ballinger herself. Because Adam responded to that saying she lied about that too. Pamela's ring, who I believe is now his current wife, is hers and hers alone. The stone is bigger and better color and clarity. Nothing about it was taken from anything else. And also, yeah, thanks for bringing up my sobriety. Three point five years strong and still going. Now first I want to say congratulations to Josh for being sober for three and a half years. I can imagine that is a very tough thing and something that he should definitely be proud of. So yeah, maybe we should bring it up in the comments even more and be like, congratulations, Josh, well done, mate. But secondly, this is just such a stupid rumor to even go around and spread. But again, I'm going to say this phrase a million times. It just exemplifies who Colleen is as an individual, despite it being something so unbelievable unbelievably petty and pathetic, she actually spent her time spreading this rumor. And apparently she started this rumor by speaking to people like Trisha Paytas, and apparently then this got circulated around the community. And based on all the messages that we've seen before, I really wouldn't be surprised if she also didn't just speak to Trisha, but also spoke to her fans like she loves to do, and spread this absolutely embarrassing rumor for no apparent reason. It's utterly pathetic, but it's something that Colleen Ballinger seem to love to do. Just go around and say nasty things about her ex-husband. And bearing in mind, this is the same individual that was going into these chats being like, oh, I work 24-7. How could I do any of these things? I mean, it, it, it's just utterly pathetic. Like, did she not even realize when she was typing out the message of, oh, I work 24-7, that she is spending that time in that 24-7 hour range speaking in a group chat of fans? Did you not have anything 
anything as a grown 30 year old woman to be doing better than what you are doing here. This entire segment is genuinely so petty and pathetic. It seems like high school drama, yet it is something that a grown woman was engaging in on a daily basis. I know it's not the most serious thing and probably is actually the least serious thing throughout this entire saga, but I really just cannot believe the levels of pettiness that Colleen was getting to. In fact, the malicious stuff makes more sense. Like, yes, it's awful, but I uh, maybe there's like some reasoning that you can make behind it. Bad reasoning, but ultimately reasoning. But this, just why? It's so utterly unnecessary and I, I feel like the husband Josh in this situation has probably had to deal with a lot of people speculating about some of the things that went on in their relationship because of Colleen herself because she couldn't stop herself from speaking to people and spreading lies and rumors it's pathetic but obviously that is who Colleen is if Colleen falls out of somebody she will do absolutely anything that she needs to do as malicious as it can possibly be to spread rumors to spread a narrative that that person is now a nasty person, Colleen is in the right, and they are in the wrong. We saw this with Cody. Colleen no longer liked Adam, Colleen needed to prove the world that Adam was a bad person, so she went to another superfan, Cody, and convinced Cody that Adam was lying about everything and was just, in general, a pretty bad person. She was no longer with Josh in this relationship, so she went round to other fans and started manipulating them and spreading rumours that Josh was a bad person and Colleen was in the right. She is so utterly obsessed with controlling the narrative in every single situation and people can argue to me, oh, that wasn't her intent. She was just a little bit of a gossip who went too far. No, how many times can somebody be exposed for the same thing until you realize this person probably is a bit of a dick? And I'm gonna go back to the video that I played you earlier of where Colleen was seemingly devastated about their divorce. I'm just gonna say it. Joshua and I are getting a divorce. Man, that sucks to say out loud. <laughs> Now in this video, she seems justifiably upset, and you know, in typical YouTuber fashion, she is crying without any tears coming out whatsoever. But yes, if you were to see this video, you'd think, oh, she's broken, she's upset, and she now needs to go and do some healing, and good on her for telling her fans to not harass Josh and to not say bad things about Josh. But obviously, from the small amount of things we've gone through so far, we now know that that was complete and utter hypocrisy. And honestly, based on everything that we've seen, based on the rumors and the lies and the speculation, it all just seems very malicious and almost calculated. In every situation where Colleen tries to paint somebody as a bad person, she loves to paint herself as the innocent one in this situation, never somebody who is in the wrong and it correlates to what Josh was saying in his tweets. She does these things deliberately. She gaslights people. She convinces people that they're in the wrong and she is in the right. In this video, she's painting an extremely positive public perception of herself by being like, don't, don't be mean to him. Don't harass him. We don't need the stress right now. Whilst being extremely villainous behind the scenes, I feel like I'm watching Two-Face in the Dark Knight right now. One minute she's being the sweet, innocent individual and the next, Next, she's being this malicious, terrible person spreading all these nasty rumors about this same person she is saying to be nice to. And we know the only reason she's saying the whole nice part is because she wants the public to think, oh, I'm this really sweet and wholesome individual, whilst the super fans who will never say anything, or at least what Colleen thought at the time they would never say anything, but at the time they wouldn't say anything, so she would entrust them like little minions to go spread the rumors throughout the community without her name being attached to it and everybody thinking, oh, she's such a lovely and sweet individual. It's honestly like Game of Thrones at this point. It's actually kind of insane. And with that, it only leads us into the next part in the part two of this video of where, once again, Colleen has been horribly mistreating somebody in her personal life. And yes, that is Trisha Paytas.
Now at the beginning of this video, I said that this situation started off as a Oh, this is a very immoral thing and you should apologize to Oh my god you may be going to jail, Colleen Ballinger. In my first documentary, the things that we were covering weren't exactly things which broke the law, but the anger mainly came from a moralistic standpoint. I don't believe that something to be wrong means that the law has been broken. You can abide by the law and still be a terrible person. And that's what it pretty much seemed in my first documentary. But now we are entering a moment of time where actual authorities may be looking into this. They may be watching this video right now. Go to the comment section and say hello criminal convictor because Colleen Ballinger has seemingly actually committed a crime. This is the biggest thing that has happened in this entire situation. And reminder, this is a situation where the woman has sent underwear as a 30-year-old woman to a 13-year-old child. She has now somehow done something worse than that. And of course, it involves Trisha Paytas. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, it's now been exposed that in the past, or maybe even still in the present, Colleen Ballinger has had a continuous pattern of behaviour where she has taken 18 plus NSFW images from certain media websites of where she has taken adult content and distributed that to children. Pretty much in short, Colleen Ballinger took Trisha Paytas's adult photos and sent them to a child known as Adam McIntyre. I'm not blaming Adam in any sense here, but I just want to ask the question of why did she think that she would get away with, with, with any of this? Firstly, the underwear. Secondly, the inappropriate French friendship that she had with Adam. But now this is being exposed. I truly do feel bad for Adam because everything that we have gone through in these two videos is something that no child should have to experience. And I would not be shocked if this has damaged Adam's upbringing to a certain extent and also the other fans that have been involved in this situation and i understand i'm kind of getting ahead of myself here and there's a lot of information that we need to actually go through and fill in the gaps because this is only kind of like the ending chapter of what's happening here we really need to talk about how we actually got here and once again it involves another super fan that colleen ballinger apparently had another inappropriate friendship with and that is johnny silvestri and yes johnny is somebody who is above the age of 18, but it doesn't deny the fact that he was a super fan to the point of where Johnny apparently was going on tour with Colleen behind the scenes and all that good stuff. Apparently, they had a very close friendship between him, Colleen, and also Josh. Josh is the person who also recently issued an apology to Johnny that I mentioned earlier. We won't be going through that, but the reason that I bring it up is because it's very evident that Johnny was a big part of the Colleen Ballinger fan base. And this is where we get into the recent events of where Johnny pretty much came out with a lot of posts sharing screenshots of DMs between him and Colleen in the years of 2018 and 2020 of where Colleen would seemingly just randomly send photos to Johnny and these photos were NSFW photos of Trisha Paytas, adult photos from her adult social media profiles, in particular a website that I'm not going to name for age restriction reasons, but you can probably guess the name of the website. Now, I'm not exactly sure at this point of the timeline if any laws have been broken here. Now, yes, if these texts were images taken directly from a paywall, which Colleen has gone behind and now is distributing for free, there could be some legal repercussions to that. But ultimately, on a, a bigger moral perspective here, Johnny in these messages was a grown adult, but that doesn't take away from anything and what is going on here. These messages involve of body shaming and were deliberately sent to utterly shame Trisha Paytas, who at this point of time was a friend of Colleen Ballinger. As I mentioned earlier, Trisha was speaking to Colleen about their divorce. Trisha and Colleen knew each other in real life, yet behind the scenes to super fans, Colleen was sending these messages. It's utterly just weird, disgusting, vile. There are so many descriptive words that I could use to describe describe this, but ultimately, it's once again Colleen just being a horrible person to people in her personal life. I do not understand why Colleen Ballinger just insists on being malicious and horrible, even to the people that 
are just there for her behind the scenes, but this is the reality of it. These messages are publicly available now, and obviously when they were made available, the internet went wild. And I know what a few people will say, well, Johnny was an adult, Colleen was an adult, they both should be taking moral responsibility for their actions in this situation, because just like Cody, there really is no child vindication here. You can't just be like, oh, they were a sweet, innocent kid that didn't know better. No, Johnny was not a child, and yes, he was a super fan who probably would be willing to do a lot to impress Colleen, but ultimately he did engage in these conversations, and fair play, he has issued an apology since. And yeah, obviously that's up to you and up to Trisha Paytas whether you want to accept this apology or not, but ultimately it was Colleen who started these conversations, it was Colleen who sent these images, and what makes it even weirder is this was such a common thing, a thing that she just continuously did, Johnny could outright predict when Colleen would be sending these messages. As you can see here, Colleen sends like a hidden image, and Johnny guesses that it's going to be about Trisha Paytas. This is how weird Colleen Ballinger is. She she wouldn't just do this once, it wasn't like a once or twice finger where she was just nasty for no reason. No, this was a malicious thing that she was doing a lot, to the point of where Johnny knew that she was going to do it, even though, as you can see in the dates, they weren't really regularly speaking, but because of this continuous thing that she had been doing throughout their friendship, he knew that this was going to be a nude photo of Trisha Paytas. That is so utterly weird. I, I, I've asked this question like a million times, but Colleen, what... <laughs> What is wrong with you? Especially when you take into the context that Colleen is somebody that presents herself as this sweet and innocent individual. Oh, she she's just a, a bit of a prankster. You know, she makes a few edgy jokes on the Miranda Sings accounts. Edgy jokes translating to extremely unfunny jokes. But albeit, she's this sweet and innocent individual who, you know, takes the adult content of her friends from their paywalls and sends it to fans to mock them and, and body shame them. To even say it out loud is just so utterly weird. Like, yes, there is a lot of moral issues here, but ultimately, you are, Colleen, just a strange individual. I really don't understand how she got away with this for so long, but obviously, I, I guess it comes from the fan dynamic. Colleen obviously thought that these super fans would never betray her, and that is why there is just so much dirt that these fans seem to have that is now being exposed via this avalanche of effect, but of course you may be thinking to yourself, well Fraser, you said that some criminal action had happened here, and yeah, there may be some like copyright issues of her distributing paid content, but ultimately where has the law that you were referring to previously been broken? Well ladies and gentlemen, we need to go a few weeks before Johnny actually came out with these tweets, because there were like cracks in the earth, you know, to signal that the earthquake was coming, is that how earthquakes work? I don't know. Basically, there were a few tweets beforehand kind of signaling that these uh, posts were going to come out because it seems that, yes, he wasn't the only person receiving Trisha Paytas's NSFW photos. Because on June the 13th, 2023, Adam McIntyre, who I mentioned earlier, tweeted, Trisha, Colleen and I used to send your OF pics and videos and make fun of how you looked, by the way. In brackets, I was 15 and Colleen was in her 30s. And by the way, there is someone who Colleen made fun of Trisha's Patreon of who was a fan, but it's just whether they'll speak up or not. A lot of conversations are happening behind behind the scenes right now. And obviously that fan has now come out and that fan was Johnny. But obviously there's a little bit of an issue with Adam's tweets, which is a little bit more of an issue than Johnny's original tweet. Adam states in those posts, he was 15 and Colleen was 30 years old distributing adult explicit 18 plus NSFW OF content. And I know I sound like I'm losing my mind right now, but it's mainly because this woman has committed a crime and she pulled out a ukulele and sung to us, telling us, I've taken accountability. Do you know how insane that is? Do you know how absolutely mental that is? I can't put into words the sheer audacity that this human being must have to think that she was going to get away with absolutely 
any of this. Why would she make this apology fully knowing that there was more stuff going to come out, far worse stuff going to come out, and this would only make the situation a million times worse, but then that would only triple in worseness when these tweets came out. Why would she do this? I, I, I'm starting to think, is she an idiot? Yes. Maybe. And YouTube, I'm not even being rude or mean when I say that. I'm trying not to break TOS in any forms of way. But that's just an observation. Is this not stupidity in the grand context of everything we're speaking about right now? And now, yes, at this point of time, I don't believe that there are any DMs between Adam and Colleen exchanging these images. But the fact of the matter is, firstly, maybe Adam did not want these DMs to exist on his computer or phone anymore. But secondly, how many times in this situation has Adam said something which has come true about Colleen Ballinger? People will say, oh, this is a bit too far. I don't know if I can believe this. This was the same woman that sent underwear to the same child that we are speaking about here. I really don't think that this would be really out of the ordinary given the sheer context of everything that we have mentioned so far. She really is, in my opinion, probably going to do absolutely anything at this point. She was chatting about her divorce with fans. She was asking for pics from fans. So why would this be unlikely? Especially when we have seen that she has done this just with another super fan. And I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, well, is this a crime? Was it because, you know, it, it wasn't technically her photos, it was somebody else. Is this a crime? I'm going to answer the question for you right now. As you can see here, it says an adult who sends an explicit selfie to a minor may be charged with a crime for the actions that Colleen has committed. From all the descriptions here, this seems to match up with what Colleen has done. It doesn't necessarily state that it needs to be your selfie. I think it can be any explicit 18 plus NSFW content that isn't for educational purposes. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't think sending Trisha Paytas's 18 plus OF contents to a child is an educational thing. In fact, <laughs> it's just weird to even say. But I guess you're now wondering, well, what is Trisha doing in this situation? What does she think? Because obviously they run a podcast with Colleen Ballinger. They are friends with Colleen Ballinger. I have referenced Trisha before this situation in this video. What is Trisha's take on this entire thing. Because I've seen a lot of people being like, oh, Trish is a bad person. Oh, Trish is involved in this situation. Oh, Trish has done all of these bad things. And yes, I agree with you. Trisha Paytas, in my opinion, isn't a great person. I don't have any reasons to like Trisha Paytas, but I don't think any of that is relevant right now. What has happened in this situation is beyond that. This is absolutely horrible, and I can only imagine that Trisha Paytas is probably extremely embarrassed to see what has been happening behind the scenes with somebody who she once considered a friend. This is a horrible situation, which I would not wish on anybody. It's disturbing, it's weird, and it's just outright wrong. And when we're thinking like that now, imagine if you were the individual that this has happened to and obviously Trisha was not happy and that's why they uploaded this video on the 3rd of July 2023 titled Colleen. And I would say this video is like the nail in the coffin for Colleen Ballinger's career, but it's more like the nail in the jail cell which she's going to be permanently staying in for breaking a heinous crime. Like seriously, is she gonna go to jail for- well, well, we'll answer that in a bit. But yeah, this video, as you can imagine, is Trisha responding to the actions that have recently been exposed about Colleen, not just the ones involving her, and just in general how much it disgusts Trisha, but also Trisha, yeah, spoke up on the situation involving explicit photos of them being spread around. And what we're gonna do now is go through some specific individual clips from this video, which is relevant to what we're speaking about now, and that starts us off with Trisha actually kind of explaining what their their friendship was with Colleen Ballinger. Because from the public perception right now, especially given that Colleen and Trisha do a podcast, most people seem to believe that these two are good friends and a horrible betrayal has happened here. So uh, let's just get in to see what Trisha has to say. I'm putting my own hurt feelings aside and my feelings are very hurt. Um, I've had like a sick to my stomach feeling for a while now and today especially. Um, Me and Colleen started a podcast this year, three episodes, 
uh, we were always friendly before. I think it shocked a lot of people because like, oh, I didn't know they were close friends like that. And the thing is, is um, we weren't close friends. We were friends. I considered us to be friendly. When I had my daughter, she reached out and I thought, oh, it's great to have mom friends and, you know, um, friends, you know, who have kids. So <clears throat> I thought this podcast would be great because we always got along really great when we would see each other. Um, we've been doing videos together on and off, like maybe, maybe once a year since 2018. And, um, and so I, you know, I just thought, well, this is a good podcast to get to know each other. It's a good, you know, a little thing for me to do because I haven't really done anything for a couple of years and I really enjoy being creative and producing stuff. And, um, it was, it was kind of fun to do costumes and stuff. So yeah, they weren't exactly best friends, but they were still people that had social interactions with each other. They met each other in real life. They worked together on the same show together. And just in general, they interacted fondly with each other. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, even if they weren't, even if these two hated each other, what transpired still would not be justified. Just because you hate somebody does not give you the right to body shame them, mock them for how they look or how their body is. Just because you hate somebody doesn't give you the right to go onto their private page, which it costs to be on, take explicit images from that and send it to children. Now, I know that sounds like a little bit of an insane thing to say because it's an insane thing to do, an illegal thing to do, may I add. It is an insane thing to do, but it's exactly what she did. And no other second apology is going to justify it. And in fact, I don't think if Khalid ever does address this, she's going to actually like be like, oh, I'm, I, I have this reasoning. I think she's probably just going to try and cry with no tears coming out again, just like she did with a divorce and, and be like, oh, Trisha, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. And all your sorries aren't going to mean anything. You've done this you're going to jail. But going back to the video, the first eight minutes of it is pretty much just Trisha going over the entire situation between Colleen and Adam and the rest of her fans, and basically just completely denouncing it, saying how inappropriate the whole thing is, and just in general, how wrong Colleen is in this situation. I've seen a lot of people make statements being like, oh, isn't this ironic coming from Trisha Paytas, who is always involved in drama and bad situations, and I, I wouldn't really say it's ironic. I don't think Trisha Paytas has ever been involved in something as serious as what Colleen Ballinger has done in this saga, but ultimately, I, I can see why people would see Trisha Paytas denouncing somebody as kind of ironic, and I've also seen people say, well, why did Trisha not come out and denounce Colleen Ballinger even before these texts came out, given the sheer nature of the subject over the last few weeks involving Colleen and Adam McIntyre and other fans? And I can understand that criticism, yet at the same time, I I'm not being defensive here, but I feel like if Trisha Paytas came out and was making videos about Colleen Ballinger, that almost would, would give Colleen Ballinger some level of way to actually respond and win some people over just because of the sheer negative perception of Trisha Paytas. It almost is better for Trisha to just say nothing previously with all of the other stuff to do with Adam because ultimately Trisha Paytas does have such a negative reputation and I think if Trisha came out speaking about it, a lot of people would be like oh, you're just betraying your friend you're just clout tracing or something like that. But obviously now Trisha is speaking because this thing does actually personally involve them with a very serious thing and I can understand why Trisha is now speaking. So yeah, maybe Trisha could have said something but ultimately at the same time, it probably would have went wrong for Trisha either way if they did. But then finally, about halfway through, Trisha starts to actually speak about this situation of their explicit photos being shared around to Colleen's fans. And this clip is quite long but I think you guys do need the full context here because it speaks about Adam, it speaks about Johnny, and just in general how Trisha stands by these two. And yeah, let's get into it. I need to nip this in the bud that I do not condone at all um, unsolicited nudes, sending unsolicited nudes to anyone of anybody, sex worker or not. I think using someone's nudes as a way to hurt them, make fun of them, make light of them, um, be mean is is the lowest form of human, the lowest form of intelligence. I think that's so inhumane. I think that's so disgusting for anyone. Like, 
last night the text um the text messages were shown and it's very clearly from Colleen to a fan has over half a million views on Twitter that I'm um I'm not embarrassed by I'm embarrassed for her I try to take myself out of these equations when I'm feeling triggered and if I were to look at it as it happening to someone else I wouldn't I wouldn't be humiliated for the person in the photos. I'd be humiliated for the person who sent them. Um, although it can be humiliating for the person in the photos as well. Um, and it somewhat is embarrassing. I get made fun of all the time for my body, my nudes, even under this person's posts. Um, while I'm thankful um, he posted them so I could see that this is real, um, it's hearing all that horrible stuff underneath the photo, like about my body just being messed up or disgusting. And it's, it's, it's a lot. Yes, I'm a sex worker and yes, I chose this job and yes, I make money doing it. Um, but it never feels good to have someone just like make fun of your naked body. It's just a really vulnerable thing. And, um, it's, it is, it is a little embarrassing if I'm being honest, but I'm more embarrassed for her that this is the kind of person she is. Like I'm so firstly, I want to mention the thing that I mentioned previously of people being like, oh, I, I don't care what Trisha has to say. Trisha's always involved in controversies and done loads of bad things. And, and yeah, I agree. But how do you hear what Trisha just said and not react even slightly emotionally? I mean, have a heart, man. Imagine logging onto your social media and seeing your private images from behind a paywall or at least your private private Twitter or Instagram accounts getting leaked publicly and you're getting mocked on those images, body shamed in those images, but then you find out that those messages were apparently distributed to a minor, but then you are also finding out that the person that distributed those messages is one of your friends that you know in person, hang out with, have socially interacted with, and you even work on a podcast with. It's genuinely quite disturbing and just again another example of Colleen Ballinger's nature as a human being she is very malicious and I, I know it's easy to say that about a lot of content careers but at this point how many things are going to get exposed as I mentioned earlier people were guessing how long my video is going to be how much more could there be but it seems every single day a horrible thing gets exposed about Colleen not like an old video or an old tweet or something but actually actual horrible malicious things where she has attacked her own friends personal people in her life that were there for her it's just sad and wrong and i think the more insane thing about this is colleen ballinger has done something so bad that i am now standing by trisha paytas in support do you know how bad of a thing you must have done for that to happen that is a very rare thing but congratulations colleen you have achieved that. The whole thing is so sick and twisted, but when you find out even further context behind Colleen's conversations with Johnny and Adam, it only gets so much worse. Sending these to fans unsolicited, the context of which she was sending these. I, I don't get the purpose. I don't know if there was an inside joke I'm missing on this. The fan said, hey, congratulations on becoming parents. Um, which a month later she just responds with a, a nude of me and says you look so pretty in this and these weren't a long time ago this is someone well into their 30s just gave birth sending nudes and I a month prior I was in her house meeting her child and doing a mukbang meeting her newborn and doing a mukbang with her In these texts, there's also friends of hers. They showed the viewing parties that were talked about to make fun of me. They did viewing parties of my adult content to make fun of me. And there's a friend of hers who I actually met as well back in 2018 with his face posing next to explicit images of me. 
and um, there was a video of it, and it's a lot, it's a lot. There's nothing really more I can add to this other than saying this is just really sad and really disturbing, and also, we need to bring this apology up for a 50th time, because given everything that's been exposed here, Colleen would have knew about this, but she still made this video. Do you know how mental that is? That is <laughs> just so weird but also you have to just ask the question of why every single time we go over anything any instance of what colleen has done i always ask did you not think this would get exposed but i guess she really didn't even with the worst of the worst stuff in this situation and it makes me think what else could possibly come out in this situation because for all we know there could be even worse things that's how deep this rabbit hole goes and it's absolutely insane because considering the perfect, wonderful persona that she liked to portray herself as. Even in her apology, she was telling us how she takes accountability, and then she was getting really passive-aggressive because nobody was forgiving her. But apparently, this isn't just a public thing. This is also a private thing of where she will try and manipulate you into not believing the truth, even if there are actual screenshot pieces of evidence there in your face. She will lie to your face saying, that's not true, there needs to be more context and this happened with Trisha. There's a clip of her saying she saw a whale squirt and she wasn't talking about Trisha Paytas. I sent her that as well and she said everything's taken out of context, like these are lies and being as I was like her friend and I knew her as a person, I was trusting her, I guess, um, because, I mean, overall, who do you trust, like, this person you know in real life, or people you have, you, you don't know anything about? This entire saga just seems like Colleen Ballinger having a outright problem, almost an addiction to just violating the trust with any person that she's ever had a personal connection with. And it seemed that up until May of this year that nobody had actually confronted Colleen about any of this, but that's actually not true. As we just saw, Trisha Paytas themselves confronted Colleen about something that Colleen said in a video, and she was like, oh, there was context, there was something different here. And again, this is just her violating the trust, even though the evidence is right here. A whale tail. What's the context here? What is going to make this seem any better than what it actually is? There, there isn't. There is no way you can change up what you said. What you said is nasty and wrong, but you absolutely cannot take accountability. As, as much as she wanted to say it in her apology a billion times, she is the worst influencer I've ever seen when it comes to taking accountability. It seems that in any situation where Colleen gets exposed, she will either attempt to outright deny that thing even happened, but if there is evidence of those things happening, she will instead be like, oh, but what about the context? The biggest issue that came from his video is that I sent a child underwear and Wow, anyone who heard this out of context and was offended, I completely understand because I would be too. But in this situation, context is everything. Where is the context to any of these things? In fact, the context only makes it worse in pretty much every single scenario. But the reason she is saying context is because she thinks that by saying that one buzzword, it's going to completely change the minds of people out there because people will be like, oh, people take things out of context all the time. I guess I'll believe it. But, but, but we're not stupid, Colleen. We know what you're doing here. It's just more emotional manipulation, but how much manipulation can it be until it is a big fat lie? Now, the rest of the video is pretty much Trisha apologizing to the people that received the text from Colleen, and also just in general separating herself from Colleen. She no longer follows Colleen, and it seems that this is just another friendship of Colleen's ended due to an outright violation of trust, and just in general, Colleen's horrible actions. And I mentioned at the beginning of this video, nukes being sent into Mount Doom as a description for what's going on in, in Colleen's career and fandom right now, but I think we just need to throw in like 23 more nukes 
clips to describe what's happened here because Trisha's video does actually have over a million views at this point. Videos about Trisha's situation have over a million views and just in general, you thought things were calming down but it seems that they have only gotten even crazier because crimes have actually been committed and serious consequences are absolutely required. In my opinion, Colleen Ballinger needs to respond to this immediately. This has been at the point of recording this a few days since this video came out and I'm utterly shocked that Colleen has just been silent about this entire thing. In fact, Colleen has actually come out while well, her lawyers have come out recently addressing something else, a point which is very easily scored, but when it comes to addressing the actual serious things, they're not saying anything. They're remaining silent and nothing is being said. I imagine they may deny sending stuff to Adam. I may have to say that now it is all alleged, but ultimately you can't deny what's being sent to Johnny. I think that she will probably come out and apologize, try not to make any justifications for it because she knows that if she does that at this point, it's it's even more game over than it already is. The game ended like 20 years ago. Now we're just... Now we're just dealing with the fallout. But I think what Colleen's legal representatives are doing here is extremely telling and it is the exact same technique that Colleen applied in her high video where she would take a small specific thing and use that as a thing to paint over the entire picture just like she did in 2020. In 2023, she used the fart joke, which we'll speak about later. In 2020, she mentioned other minor things that she was exposed for, such as her dog being put down she lied about that, but it was very minor points where she would use them to paint a picture that she would prefer about the entire situation, and it's clear that her legal representatives are now doing that. Rather than addressing absolutely everything at once, they're going to address a very easy and minute point as a way to start scoring points. I don't think they're going to address this for a while, maybe they would have by the time this video is coming out, but ultimately this says a lot, but after this, it only continues to get worse. Because after Trisha's video and after everybody coming out and speaking about this situation, Johnny Silvestri, the person that first exposed this part of the saga, actually came out and uploaded this video titled Dear Trisha and Colleen, My Response to Trish. And this is once again another video of Colleen Ballinger's parasocial and manipulative behavior being exposed by another ex-superfan. At this point of time, I feel like there are just thousands of these same videos. I'm not coming for the creators. Make as many as you want, you know. But but it just, it just confuses me to how many people were involved in this situation and how Adam was dubbed as a liar for so long despite so much information clearly being readily available and Johnny actually starts to speak about this in the video and why Johnny didn't come out of this information in 2020. I experienced something very similar in 2020 when Adam first started coming out with his stories. I knew that Colleen was in the wrong but it's just hard when you feel like the right thing to do is be a friend towards this person when they're hurting. And that's the tricky part is learning boundaries and understanding when you're displaying humanity versus when you're enabling. And I think that's a tough pill a lot of us adults are swallowing in this situation. Now, this is something I've noticed a lot of ex-Colleen superfans say that they didn't come out in 2020 to defend Adam McIntyre because they were in a parasocial relationship with Colleen Ballinger. Now, I understand you will say, oh, well, he's a grown adult. He should obviously be able to comprehend situations a bit better to a child. And I, and I do agree, but Johnny has apologized and that's up to Adam whether he wants to accept that apology. But ultimately, we can cannot deny the fact that Colleen Ballinger obviously controlled this situation in a very calculated way. She would come in these chats being like, besties, I, I, I want to have a sleepover, you guys are my friends and stuff like that. The reason she was saying this is because she genuinely wanted to convince these stands that they were friends, because friends don't snake uh, each other's friends, you know? You don't go around somebody's back and say some personal information about your friend because you, you're friends with them, you know? It's private information unless they've done something illegal legal again I feel like maybe that should have been said. But for all the people that didn't know about this information in 2020, I can kind of understand it. They were all manipulated by this person that they were pretty much in love with as a, on a friend level. They thought this person was amazing, was wonderful, one of their besties. But obviously, 
that was just a complete utter manipulative tactic by Colleen to cultivate this audience. And I do think that Johnny should have spoken about this stuff in 2020. The same goes for Cody and all the other people who were silent and knew about the very sensitive information. But let's be real, we shouldn't be shifting the blame here. If we do that, it's only going to take the heat away from Colleen. I think infighting is exactly not what we need right now, and maybe we can speak about that in the future. But right now, Colleen is the one that should be taking the blame. Colleen is the one that has committed the terrible actions in this situation. And the thing I've been wondering throughout all of this, though, is, well, how did this whole Trisha Paytas sending photo joke thing even start? Because it is a very weird thing, and Johnny actually does explain how the whole thing kicked off. I'll elaborate. We, uh, to keep it long story short, we were in Toledo, Ohio. It was the 26th of July, I believe, 2018. We had a day off, but since I didn't have room access, I was stuck on the bus. So I got hungry and I went to lunch by myself. I walked to a Taco Bell that was like a mile away since I didn't have a car. And I saw that her, Corey and Eric went to a little hibachi lunch date and it hurt my feelings. And I acknowledged that. And rather than her just saying, I'm sorry, she started this inside joke where you can see on one of my pictures, it has the date July 26th, which was our off day in Toledo. So it tracks. And she, rather than just saying sorry, she started this inside joke where she said, she complimented me and said, I looked good that day. And instead of including a picture of me, she included a picture of Trish, which unraveled and turned into this inside joke where I would receive dozens of nude photos of Trisha Paytas with Colleen implying that it was me, Johnny, in the photos. You can see that in the screenshots, but now you have a little bit better of an idea of how this formulated. The messed up part is I think she already had this inside joke with Adam at the time, and she was just recycling it with me because clearly he thought it was funny, so why, why wouldn't I? I know, it's stupid. I was 22 at the time of bus tour. Um, I'm not proud of that, that I partook in these activities. I've apologized to Trish publicly. If I can do it personally, I would love to as well. This is really weird. Like, there is still no real understanding for me to why this would even come up to Colleen Ballinger's mind. And also, yes, I still think Johnny Silvestri does deserve criticism for this, and I, I don't think he denies that. But mainly, why would Colleen Ballinger even think to start this. Firstly, Trisha was her friends. Trisha was somebody that they knew in real life. Trisha was somebody that they went into business with in the future. So why would you do this? Still, even if you weren't going to do any of that, even if it was your mortal enemy, why? And that goes to everything in this situation. Just why would she do any of this? It's so utterly bizarre. But, but, but again... <laughs> It only gets worse, and I'm like, I'm laughing like the Joker right now, because I'm starting to lose my mind, fellas. How deep is this this iceberg gonna go? I could have turned this into a six-hour iceberg video at this point. Don't give me any ideas. But pretty much after Johnny's video, Adam McIntyre then came out with his own video titled Dear Trisha Paytas, and this video now has over a million views. And in this video, Adam once again details his age during this whole situation. Johnny was like 20 whenever this 30-year-old, 30-something-year-old Colleen was sending these, you know, inappropriate videos and pictures, you know, without Johnny even asking that then I realized that the same thing was happening to me and how many other people, or maybe not, maybe it was just us, but even if it was just us, you know, I was 14 when it was happening. And so me and Johnny talked about it behind the scenes and Johnny posted about it and then I posted about it and it was kind of just something that people said we were lying about. People were like, there's no way a 30 something year old woman would ever send you naked photos, naked videos of Trisha Paytas, you know, because that is, at least to me, you know, to Johnny, it was really inappropriate and, and really disgusting to send that in terms of making fun of Trisha, but also sending it to your fan is inappropriate. He's not asking for them. But to then, about me, she was a 30-something-year-old woman sending 
imagery to a minor. I was 14 years old and she was sending me Trisha Paytas's naked body, whether it was videos or pictures. Which is a crime. I, I, I don't think there's any other way we can go about this. There, there, there's no context which we can change here. This is a crime. And I'm genuinely confused to why this information isn't being taken as seriously as it actually should. People can say, oh, Fraser, everybody's talking about it. Everyone's talking, you know, gossiping. That's the problem. People are taking this like it's like some joke or some, some funny weird thing that Colleen Ballinger did. But I, I hate to do this comparison again, but I think it's absolutely true just because it seems that young male victims never really get listened to if they're a kid. But if you change the genders here, a man sending this stuff to a little guy, you know what I'm saying. It, it, it goes down a lot differently. And I think it's weird that Colleen Ballinger is even being given the opportunity to start building another response because it's exactly probably what she is doing right now. When the reality is, is the response should be made to a courtroom, not to a YouTube audience. We shouldn't be listening to what Colleen Ballinger has to say about this in a YouTube video. <laughs> a jury should be, be listening to this. This is a criminal action, and I will say that 50 times if I need to, because I think we really need to take the sheer gravitational pull of this situation seriously. And I don't even think that description makes any sense. Drama is, oh, gas size new drink, taste of piss. Drama isn't. Ah, uh, they're two different things. But going back to the video itself, later on throughout the video, Adam actually goes on to explain his personal perspective of the friendship dynamic between Colleen and Trisha. And it's just really, really sad. Uh, we were always friendly before. I think it shocked a lot of people because like, oh, I didn't know they were close friends like that. And the thing is, is um, we weren't close friends. We were friends, I considered us to be friendly. When I had my daughter, she reached. And unfortunately, I mean, I, I don't mean to, you know, add salt to the wind, but it was very one-sided. Trisha was a joke to Colleen. It was a very commonly known thing. Um, and one thing I want to start this video by saying is something that was, and I have been, my story has never changed. First and foremost, especially when it comes to Trisha and Colleen. Colleen used to always talk about the fact that she wants to befriend Trisha because Trisha is a joke to her and Corey specifically. So they enjoy being able to have Trisha at arm's length. But I remember multiple conversations where Colleen said that, you know, her biggest fear would be one day Trisha exposing her. And so they need to be always nice to her. So just to give you all a little insight on what I do know, Colleen's biggest fear on YouTube is currently happening. Her biggest fear was that one day Trisha Paytas would expose her. And this video isn't Trisha Paytas exposing Colleen, it's Trisha Paytas responding to something that Colleen has done which is illegal and morally and ethically very wrong. Um, it's just, it's crazy to me knowing the years I spent talking to Colleen and Trisha would come up frequently where she would say that that is something that, you know, scares them about Trisha. And there were so many moments where they'd be talking shit about Trisha and they'd be like, oh, but we can't drop her because what if she turns on us? So for this to happen now, and what I will say is I watched this video at Disneyland and I had my earphone in. So I only picked up in certain parts because Disneyland is loud. Um, and Trisha comes across really well. In this video. Now, you know what? I completely agree with what Adam's saying here. For once, Trisha Paytas actually is coming off extremely well, and I think that's because she's genuinely shocked that a friend has betrayed her trust to this extent. It's it's such a awful and malicious thing that somebody could do to you, and I can completely understand why Trisha is reacting like this. Coming from the perspective of Trisha Paytas, I imagine given her public reputation, she does find it quite difficult to make friends. Now, yes, that may be a self-inflicted thing, but ultimately, imagine you finally do make a friend and you start working on a project together, only to find out that that friend is privately ridiculing you to young fans, to the worst extent. That is probably 
horrible. Personally, I think Trisha has reacted in a very light way. I think if Trisha really wanted to, she could have come down hard on Colleen. She could have said absolutely the most aggressive things possible. She could have insulted Colleen. But honestly, I think the reaction that Trisha has put out in the world is far more genuine and sincere. And I honestly appreciate it a lot more because it seems completely authentic, despite all of the criticisms out there about Trisha Paytas. And with all of these videos coming out, obviously the situation absolutely again exploded even bigger the nuclear explosion radius is just covering all of earth at this point it's even slowly getting towards mars this thing has gone even wilder she started to lose even more subscribers even more followers more dislikes were coming in more negative comments were coming in and you really do wonder at this point what she's possibly even going to say but as i said i don't think she should be presenting this to a youtube audience it should be to a courtroom and that does bring in the question of will she actually face any legal repercussions for this because she should but honestly there is this really weird thing when it comes to social media influences where they commit a crime nothing really happens I, I i don't know how because these situations are so public but maybe it's to do with a whole international thing adam was in ireland she was in california but based on californian law it does as i said seem like a law has been broken and i think because of that some real consequences need to happen here i'm getting sick of tired of covering these situations and hearing that this person just left social media and that's the only consequence they faced when the reality is 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 Colleen Ballinger has probably caused a lot of damage onto her young fans' upbringing and that is actually devastating to think about and just in general sad. I really didn't think after I ended my three and a half video I would think even lower of Colleen Ballinger a week later but it really seems that that's the case here and I feel like I'm not going to be shocked if that bar gets lowered even more given the sheer nature of this person, given how they act in every single situation how they manipulate everyone that they possibly can, I really wouldn't be shocked if it somehow got even worse from here. Because ladies and gentlemen, this story keeps on progressing as the days go by, and I feel like Trisha Paytas probably didn't realize how much her video was going to blow up. To be honest with you, I don't even think I was aware that this many people cared about the situation, but I really think that kind of exemplifies how much self-destruction Colleen Ballinger has done here by making her video, by doing all of the things that she has been exposed for, and I feel like she probably didn't realize how big things were going to get and because of all of that Trisha Paytas released another video on the 8th of July 2023 titled this is embarrassing and yeah this is just a short follow-up and to be honest with you this video makes you feel even worse for trisha because yeah as i discussed these two weren't exactly best friends but they were still friends who saw each other on a regular basis it's like one of those friendships where you don't need to see each other every single day but when you do see each other it seems to be a nice and wholesome interaction but here with this video it shows the more sinister nature behind their friendship because it does actually show that trisha was really trying to be closer to Colleen. Trisha really wanted to be friends and make something of their friendship, but Colleen clearly did not want that and only saw Trisha as some form of an inside joke. And before we go further into that, I do also want to say in this video, Trisha confirms that their podcast is officially cancelled. And actually in this video, she is sat in the podcast studio that Colleen and her were using for the podcast, which Trisha and others built. But in this video, she also confirms how sad the situation is making her and just in general, I guess how shocking the whole thing is because yeah finding out that one of your friends has been well I, I don't even want to say it again but doing what Colleen Ballinger was doing I can imagine is quite a shocking thing but it gets even more twisted when as I said we go into the friendship aspect of things here because yes Colleen and Trisha won exactly the best of friends but it's clear Trisha was trying to be closer or just in general a good friend to Colleen never ever have ordered a custom american girl doll and i was like super excited about these so okay you're gonna see this and you're gonna be like that doesn't look like you trish let me show you because it has a costume that goes with it so this is what the trish doll looks like and i know you're like okay um kind of looks like me but she has long black hair because i was going to be alphaba and you'll see by the costume in a second so she has long black hair i just had to pick clothes to put on them i mean it's funny when you make these you have to pick like face shapes and like eye colors it looks like me maybe with dark hair. Okay, cute. Okay. And then I had gotten a matching one. 
to look like. This might be, this might be embarrassing. Like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so weird. I literally, I think it's more embarrassing, like a hindsight, how much I put into this, like, uh, knowing this person is disgusted by me, but anyways, uh, so this one was supposed to be custom made to look like, yeah. So, and then she has blonde hair because it's supposed to look like, um, Galinda. So this is like, I put her in the pink one, but like same eye color and face shape and stuff. They're kind of cute, but I don't know. Like I feel now, my friends, the reason I'm showing you this clip right now is to show how much crueler this situation is than we originally thought. Because here, you can clearly see Trisha is trying to be a good friend of Colleen Ballinger. She's getting her an expensive gift. I don't know much about these dolls, but apparently they are very expensive. And this was a very nice thing for her to do. She didn't need to do this, but it was something fun for the podcast for them both. And it seemed like a very sweet thing. But obviously, on the other side of the friendship, the other person was doing the complete opposite of being nice to somebody and just doing the most incredibly disgusting and heinous things anybody could do to a friend, let alone just to another person, because obviously Colleen's actions are completely indefensible, regardless of what context they want to argue in the future in whatever apology video they put out. What they have done here is disgusting. How rude to bring up someone's body. Like, you, no one should ever talk about anyone's body ever, I don't think. I think it's completely inappropriate and wrong, and every body size and shape is beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I know to a lot of people, this may not be the biggest of points that somebody could make in this situation, but the reason I'm saying it is because if this is how Colleen was treating her friends, imagine how they were treating people behind the scenes, people that they didn't like. Adam McIntyre, for example, the people that spoke up against Colleen. And the thing is, is it kind of just seems that this toxicity just outright surrounds Colleen in her entire friendship circle. You don't need to go further than Corey's DMs that we went over in the last video, where in those DMs and group chats with yet again more fans, he's just outright talking shit about his friend Colleen Ballinger. It just seems that this level of toxicity is just so unbelievably normalized in their friendship group, and it is so obviously the thing of bad people hanging out with bad people, but let's be real, it's not not exactly that shocking. Over the years, they've obviously been enabled by each other, but also by the audience that they deliberately cultivated. And in terms of Colleen's audience, I don't blame them at all. Yes, some of them knew information that they should have spoke up about, but it's very clear that Colleen had a young and impressionable audience that was easily manipulated, and that toxic friendship group that she was in very much took advantage of that. She took advantage of that more than absolutely anybody, and it led to all of the things that we've been speaking about today and in my previous video, such as this Trisha Paytas situation. I genuinely think that she didn't even think that she was doing something wrong in this situation. I think that she just looked at Trisha Paytas, not as a person, but as some weird, twisted, sick, cruel inside joke that was manifested throughout the toxic friendship circles of Colleen Ballinger. The reason that nobody ever called this level of behavior out is because they were all as bad as each other and they picked on people like Trisha Paytas who they saw as an easy target. I'm not usually somebody to defend Trisha, and I will keep saying that, but this is obviously such an unbelievable step too far. Not even a step too far, it's just sick, cruel, and wrong, but a perfect representation of who Colleen is and the people that she surrounds herself with. But if that isn't the case, I feel like that makes it even worse, because then it is somebody that they view as a friend, but even then, they're still going to treat them absolutely horribly. There is really no no way out of this other than some horrible explanation. It's sick, it's twisted, and so unbelievably wrong, and I've been saying throughout the last two videos that I'm shocked that this carried on for so long, this sort of toxic behavior, how it was allowed to continue throughout the community, how so many weird interactions, not just with friends, but with her fans as well, never got leaked, but at the end of the day, after everything, I'm really not shocked anymore, given everything that we've explored, given the weird toxic relationship relationship with friends, but also fans, just everybody in the Colleen Ballinger circle. It really doesn't shock me that this did stay quiet for so long because of how she managed to cultivate everybody around her. And I think what makes this entire situation even more sadder is just the repercussions that this will have on YouTube communities in general. I think a lot of content creators truly do like to interact with their audience. Personally, for me, it's one of the funnest things to do to reply to comments, to reply to tweets. On my Jedi Nabba Twitter account, I genuinely have some really good connections 
reactions of people. Some days people will tweet me the exact same things just for a laugh. Some people will tweet me their dogs every single day and I'll reply with my dogs. It's a very wholesome and nice thing and I think that's what the YouTube community should be all about. But because of people like Colleen Ballinger, I now know that content creators are deliberately not responding to fans in their Twitter replies, which is such a basic thing. But people obviously don't want to be perceived as how Colleen Ballinger is now being perceived and parasocial is obviously the word that comes into these debates. People think that a lot of content creators out there have parasocial relationships with their audience and personally for me, I think this phrase has been overblown with a lot of people but it definitely can be applied to people like Colleen. They have on purposely cultivated a young audience because Colleen was aware that obviously young people are easier to manipulate than an adult. For example, Adam McIntyre got a bit older and realized what was happening when he was much younger was wrong, but when he was younger, he didn't realize it because he was a young, impressionable fan. People like Colleen Ballinger will deliberately build these parasocial relationships with their young fans to get away with their toxic, terrible behavior. It's completely intentional, and now it's going to have after effects on other YouTubers, which is really sad to see, but this is the cause and effect of Colleen Ballinger deliberately cultivating this young audience. And naturally, a lot of people, when they hear that sort of statement, come to the defense of the individual that I'm speaking about and be like, oh, they didn't pick their audience. They didn't say this sort of age demographic should come to my channel. And that leads us into the next chapter of the video, which is something which is gradually getting spoken about even more recently. And it really does represent the true sinister nature between the connection of Colleen Ballinger and her fan base. Now, ladies and gentlemen, whenever there's a situation on the internet where somebody gets exposed or there's some big drama surrounding a specific large content creator, there is usually something known as the fallout. Basically, all of your old content resurfaces and it doesn't exactly look too good. And with Colleen Ballinger, this thing has happened once again. A lot of people have been going through all of the old videos that Colleen Ballinger has made, all of the old Miranda Sings videos that Colleen has made, and it's not really been an exactly fun time for Colleen lean or where people have been saying this thing aged horrifically this thing aged poorly and just in general everybody has been going through the old media of Miranda Sings to basically see how terrible that content is in the year of 2023 but there's one piece of content one specific thing that I want to bring up and highlight. And this is a bit different to an old video not being uh, uh, as funny as a 13 year old once thought it was eight years ago. This is um this is just really sinister and honestly really messed up. Miranda Sings Live coming to basically every single state in the United States of America. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much what it says on the tin. It is Miranda Sings, the character created by Colleen Ballinger, performed live. Yes, some brave souls actually ventured into a, a, a show. They they drove 30 plus miles, maybe even longer. Maybe they got a flight. Maybe they paid for hotels to, to watch Colleen Ballinger play the Miranda Sings character live. Some sick, twisted individual did that, and they paid money for it. Now you may be thinking, now Fraser, what actually went on at these live shows? Was it funny? No. Was it appropriate for children? No. Did Colleen Ballinger not tell a child to put their hand down Colleen Ballinger's pants? No. Yes, this is something that actually happened at the Colleen Ballinger Miranda Sings live show. Uh, it's weird. It's, <laughs> it's really, really weird and really twisted, and before we even take a look at what I just mentioned, and I know you're probably thinking, Fraser, we need to do that now, we need to do that right now, and yes, you probably are eager to hear that information, and we will get into that, but I do just want to bring up the whole uh, debacle of character. Colleen Ballinger always mentions that Miranda Sings is a character created for fictional purposes for comedy and all that good stuff. Usually being a character is a defense for making certain jokes and saying and doing weird things. And, and yeah, I can understand that when it comes to a TV show, a movie, but 
I think that context changes when you are interacting with real human beings. In this context, real human beings children. And a big selling point of the Miranda Singh show is she will bring out people from the audience to act out certain things which she is doing in her show. And one of these instances which really caught the eye of a lot of people on the internet recently, which has only led to an increasing downfall of Colleen Ballinger, is in one of the skits, pretty much, Colleen brought up a child to act something out, and this involved her putting cheese balls down her trousers and telling the kid to reach in and take the cheese balls out of her pants, which are still in the bag. Now, obviously, when a lot of people discovered this, people started to say, well, yes, this is incredibly inappropriate. No adult should be doing this, regardless of if, if, it, if it's a skit played by a character or played by Colleen Ballinger. It does not matter because, as I said, this involves a real live child. Not an animation, not a character, not some fictional thing. This is a thing which is happening on a live show in front of an audience of children and parents. But the thing is, is this cheese ball incident wasn't a one-off. It wasn't like this only happened one time. This is pretty much just the entire show. Colleen Ballinger being weirdly inappropriate with her young child audience. And we will go even further into the context of the cheese ball incident and even play some videos from the show of what happened there and explain how they got there. And just in general, what was going on, but I actually want to read a thread which somebody on a Reddit page dug up from Colleen Ballinger's live show of where somebody was pretty much documenting their experience with the Miranda Sings live shows. And the main reason I want to show you this is to one, prove that Colleen Ballinger mainly has a child audience, and to two, prove that what was going on at this show was incredibly inappropriate and children should not really have been exposed to absolutely any of this because I genuinely do believe that Miranda Sings Live is probably one of the biggest examples of how sinister her connection was to her fans. When I was doing the research for this chapter of the video, I was genuinely shocked at some of the things that I found, videos that have existed for years on YouTube, TikTok, everywhere on the internet of this live show and how children were and still are to this day going to the show where these weird, inappropriate things happen. I might sound like I'm exaggerating right now, but when you see what happened, you will genuinely be shocked. So yes, let's get into this thread. Wife and I got a tickets to see a comedian we really like. Now starting off, you wouldn't really think that this is about a Miranda Sings or Colleen Ballinger show. You'd think it's about, well, somebody actually funny. The entire crowd are children with their parents. We are very confused. We are two 30 year olds sitting in the crowd drinking beer, getting weird looks. This is going to be awkward. This is going to be a Fred. Averaging age in our row, 10, including us. Children are wooing and clapping like crazy. Lights are still on and the show hasn't started yet. Two people our age just walked in. They look just as shocked as we are. So yeah, this now isn't even coming from my perspective of, oh yeah, you know, she probably has got a young audience if you look at the age of the Twitter accounts. No, no, no. This is somebody who is paid to go to the show visibly saying that every Everybody surrounding them is a child. They are surrounded by thousands of children at a Miranda Sings live show. It is the stuff of actual nightmares, but it only continues. But I do want to say before we continue, keep the whole age thing in your mind because we are going to need that context later on. This is definitely not a show for kids. Well, I said later on, I meant pretty much the next sentence because, well, as you can imagine, this is where things start to get weird. The theater is filled with shocked and pissed off parents. Oh my God, this is amazing. Not even the children understand her jokes. Parents are shocked and we're sitting here drinking. There's a whole monologue about going on. All the parents just sighed and children are cheering. This is beyond amazing. Now, firstly, Obviously, this is from the perspective of a fan here, which I think makes this even weirder because they clearly acknowledge in these tweets that what is going on at this show is definitely weird, but they're taking it as more of a little, ha ha ha, uh, yeah, this is really funny, guys. The kids are being exposed to conversations about, yeah, weird, 
weird take to have about this thing, but it's also even weird that this sort of thing is being presented at a live show, which, let's be real, is for children. I know that she'll always be like, oh, I didn't choose my audience, but you can see your audience in front of you, and this tweet is an example of that. It pretty much says that there's only, like, four adults in the room, not including Colleen and her team, and the rest are just parents with their children, but it only gets worse. She just brought a girl from the audience on stage and told her she's dressed like this is amazing the word testicle crack was said <laughs> ah that's that's really funny but why aren't you laughing now like you did up there but is this not fun anymore have i failed to entertain you you paid money to go to this why never in my life have i seen so many shocked parents and children with no friggin idea about what they're laughing and cheering about wife just finished her beer the mom who sat next to her gave it a stink eye i mean to be honest with you mate she's probably thinking why is a grown adult laughing at this and i'm, I'm not even trying to attack the person here probably they've probably grown and changed since then you know they didn't know better all that good stuff. But why were you paying to go see Miranda Sings live? And it's a question we can leave for another time. We do, we do need to actually get through this thread. We're on a bit of a time schedule this time. We're not. This video is probably going to be 50 hours long for all I know. But um, yeah, let's continue. So they post these photos. And as you can see in the picture, it's literally just children going mental. And even in one of the pictures, you can see that the subject on the board is about something very, very adult. And then after this, they actually reveal who the comedian is that they're watching. Because I think at this point, yeah, they hadn't said that. Oh, shock horror. It's Colleen Ballinger. Miranda sings. And then they say one of the mums is dragging their daughter out of the theater because of a period joke the other mom next to her covered her her daughter's seven-year-old daughter's ears it, it's it's just really weird and it's very obvious to me that even the parents there didn't know what they were getting themselves into they didn't know that this was the content that their child was consuming on the internet and people were so upset that they were leaving the show early after paying money to get there and be there and that is pretty much the end of the thread but the reason i'm showing you this is to truly prove to you that colleen ballinger's audience is definitely young it's not like there's just some stan accounts out there and they seem like they're a vocal minority no her audience is is the majority young children as you can see in the photos as you can see what the person's saying why would this person who's tweeting from a positive perspective be lying about this and also there are netflix trailers to this live show because yes netflix bought miranda sings live or they at least put it on their streaming platform and netflix you want to know why you're losing money it's because you're not putting any new shows on other than this Nobody wants to watch this, other than, like, my nine-year-old nephew. And you know what? If I catch my nephew watching that, I'm the son in the little freak. But yes, overall, this thread obviously represents that this whole live show is not a child-friendly place. Children should not be going where these things are being discussed and presented as a form of comedy, in my opinion. If you disagree with that, then maybe you should, you know, submit yourself to a, uh, you know, a prison. And this kind of leads us into going back to the cheese ball segment, where we're going to now go over a lot of resurfaced clips from this live show because yes obviously there are these weird presentations but also as i mentioned there are skits where colleen ballinger brings children onto the stage to perform certain acts it's always children in these clips it never seems to be adults and that is obviously because she has a child audience she knows she has a child audience but that doesn't stop some of the things that she does in these clips and the first clip i want to take a look at is the fart joke that colleen ballinger referenced in her original response video titled hi i'm not a predator even though a lot of you think so because five years ago i made a now, ladies and gentlemen i need to make an apology to you all and no i'm not going to whip out the ukulele because i'm i'm not that messed up of a youtuber i, I don't need to own a ukulele and neither did none of you we need to ban the instrument but I need to make an apology because when I first heard Colleen speak about that, when I covered that sentence in my first video, I thought that this was Colleen Ballinger referencing some maybe stupid tweet that she made, something that she said in the group chat. But no, it actually isn't that. It isn't some sweet, innocent thing that she's using to paint the picture over something. No, Colleen Ballinger actually was quote-unquote cancelled for a fart joke but ladies and gentlemen simply dubbing it a fart joke i feel like once again like she loves to do in all of these situations completely removes and alters the context of what actually happened in the fart joke and i'm actually going to play you the clip from the colom colom colleen ballinger live show where she performs this fart joke <laughs> 
Now, my friends, this clip has gone absolutely viral again recently after it resurfaced, like plenty of other clips. And the first thing to take into context here that the person on the stage with their legs open like this is a fan who was 16 years old and brought on stage to do, I, I guess, something. They didn't seem to know what was going to happen, but it turned out that they were very much embarrassed by this. And then secondly, I've seen a lot of people in the comments section say that this was an intentional harm. She didn't mean to upset or hurt this person or be inappropriate here. And firstly, how many times are we going to say this person didn't intend to do this? It seems that in the entire Colleen Ballinger scandal, intent and non-intentional harm is the debate that I keep seeing the only form of defense. And I feel like this defense could be made if one of these situations was a one-off, but there are now like millions of situations. And I feel like at that point, sometimes you kind of actually need to stop ignoring the whole point of intentional harm and maybe just realized that people were upset, people were hurt in the situation, regardless of somebody's intent or not. But aside from the Colleen Ballinger Weird Defense League, I feel like there's also a word which we really need to take a look into here. Context. Because yes, Colleen loves to use that word. Context. Context is a very important thing, especially when you're doing analytical commentary videos like myself, because yes, I have a sad little life. But context is important, in particular, in this situation. Because what's happening here is what I mentioned earlier, where Colleen Ballinger will bring a fan onto the live stage, the fan won't know what's going to happen, and actually, the fan in this clip spoke up about this recently, as I mentioned previously, and in one of their videos on their TikTok account, they actually brought up another old clip of Colleen, where Colleen actually describes the move from the live show in another video, but it's about the exact same move. I know that may seem a little bit confusing, but let's just look at this clip. Dance group that did really awkward moves that looked kind of sexual. Now, yes, of course, this is very weird to look at, especially when you apply the context to the fact that what she's describing there is the exact same movement she used in the fart joke, but then you also have to think about the fact that this is just the sort of thing that Miranda Sings was known for. When you look at the content that she was putting on the Miranda Sings YouTube channel, even in her books, all the media that she has on the internet just in general of Miranda Sings, this sort of thing, this inappropriate behavior towards children was absolutely everywhere. And it does come back to the whole thing of characters that I mentioned earlier, because of course, when you are writing a book which is a fictional parody, then yes, you can typically get away with saying some edgy things, doing and writing some weird and silly things. Maybe some people won't exactly like it, people will think it's vulgar, but it's not exactly the worst of the worst thing to do. But then you attribute the fact that all forms of Colleen Ballinger's media for Miranda Singh, such as her books and her videos, lead into these live shows, all of it is connected. And I think that's where we need to be critical of just in general the Miranda Singh's character. Because what I can see in this situation is Colleen using this character as a crutch to be inappropriate by her bringing her audience members onto the stage, her young audience, knowing that she has a young audience, she still does these inappropriate things. She can't make the defense when she can see that the audience is younger. Maybe if it was all online, she could be like, oh, I, I, I didn't know. But when you have an audience of children screaming and cheering at you, you should know better than what you were doing in those clips. And yes, this clip was from years ago, but the fact is when you search Miranda Sings live on YouTube, it comes up with clips from 2015 to 2023, and the majority of those clips do seem very inappropriate for children to see. And in fact, the person in the fart joke came out and recently spoke about this whole thing, and how they describe this incident makes you think the whole thing is even worse to how it seems. Because of course, some people are just looking at this like some harmless joke, the person knew what was happening, and I'm just going to now allow this person to speak the true story according to them of what happened here. Colleen traumatized. Hi, okay, my name is Becky. I'm the girl in this video and this video has one over a million views and that is a lot of people to be seeing this story without hearing it from me so I want to explain this. So I was a fan of Colleen and all the Ballinger family for a very very long time and I think in this video I was about 16. If you've never been to a Miranda show, Colleen frequently has segments where she calls people up on stage. One of those segments was the porn bit, which I'm not really going to be explaining in this video, but that's why I was kind of trying to dress skimpy so that I would be called up on stage and basically get degraded by Miranda. But I did not get called up for that. I got called up for the yoga challenge. 
Now, as soon as I stood up from the audience, I saw Colleen's eyes widen because she realized I was not wearing pants. But for some reason, that didn't stop her from continuing. In fact, no adult at any point stepped in in this situation. So we get to the point in the yoga challenge where I am laying down and Colleen is spreading my legs basically as far as she can. So she spreads them so far that you can see the spandex I was wearing under my romper, which thank God I was wearing. Now, the original video posted by Xander, Xandar, I'm sorry if I pronounced her name wrong, is only a screenshot, but there is a whole video of this. But that screenshot is the most important because that is the moment I will never forget where I was laying under Colleen and she was smirking down at me while thousands of people were laughing and I was terrified that my body wasn't covered enough up enough by the spandex or the romper. I basically felt naked, so it felt incredibly sexually violating. I was younger and my body was still developing and I was still becoming comfortable with myself, so for her to use my body as entertainment on stage really set um, my confidence back quite a lot. And not to mention after all this, after the show, I had to walk back to my car where there was many a men staring at me in a very predatory way that they were not looking at me before because of how exposed I had been on stage. So I literally did not feel safe leaving the venue. And I'm not saying this was sexual assault, although people are debating that in that comment section, but as someone who has been sexually assaulted, this situation gave me that same feeling where it feels like you need to purge and like clean out your insides, you know, just that nasty, gross feeling. There's a couple comments on Xander's video being like, oh, she signed up for that, why is this such a big deal, blah blah blah. Colleen exploited my minor body for entertainment and money and did not protect my safety at this show. As an outsider looking into this situation, it may seem like this wasn't a big deal, but this was really pretty scary for my teenage self, and especially as someone who loved and looked up to Colleen. And I could never say anything because everybody loved her. But this is who she really is. She uses kids for her own gain. I was a minor, and again, she did not protect me. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about taking your kids to a Miranda show, I would advise you to think twice. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that Becky, the person in that clip, genuinely didn't realize what was going to happen happened on stage. They probably thought they were going to come up and maybe something, I don't, I don't know, I wouldn't say wholesome because obviously the entire show isn't designed to be wholesome, but something not like that was going to happen. And I've seen obviously the defense of the intentional argument, but I've also seen people saying, oh, it wasn't that bad. But realistically, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. She was young. She didn't know what was going to happen. And then what happened happened. I personally think that can be a very embarrassing and traumatizing thing, especially in front of an audience of thousands of other children laughing, crying, shouting, and screaming. You may think that this isn't a big deal, but Becky clearly does, and I think that's what's important here. But ladies and gentlemen, as I said, this is obviously not the only incident at these shows where something incredibly inappropriate happened, and that brings us back to the cheese bowl incident, which of course is the skit that I briefly showed you earlier, but I think I should give you some explanation to what actually happens with these skits, because the thing is, the cheese ball incident is something a bit different. This seems to happen at quite a few shows. When I went through YouTube, I found multiple recordings with different kids of where this same thing happened, and pretty much what happens here is Colleen will pick out an unfortunate fan from the stage, they will come on and go on like this date thing with Colleen, and I'm just going to play a small segment before we get into the cheese ball bit to kind of give you the build-up context of what's going to happen here. I was wondering, since now you're my maid, can you help me by going on a date with me to show everyone how to go on a date? So, just yes. Okay. Yes. 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 You are doing such a good job. I love your hairs. We're going to go on a date together right now. And we're going to teach you guys how to go on a date, okay? First thing you need to do is pick a good location. So I really like going deep Okay, so you've, you've seen that, it, it, it's a bit odd, but the, the weird part only comes after this, when then the cheese ball incident starts, of where pretty much Colleen will take a bag of cheese balls, put it down her trousers, and, and tell the kid to, to, to reach in. Wait a minute.
this is really awkward. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one thing to take from this is just how uncomfortable the scene is. The kid clearly did not want to reach in. It feels so weird to watch, and it brings us back to Becky earlier. She was uncomfortable. She didn't know what was going to happen, and the same thing seems to apply here. It's just weird and uncomfortable, and this is because it's a kid interacting very weirdly with an adult after the adult has made them do these things. It's odd, and this is pretty much just what these shows are are and that is just incredibly disturbing to think but as i said this isn't the only instance of this there are other incidents where people have reached in for the uh, sounds weird for the cheese balls didn't you know if you've read it <laughs> i'm just kidding james i'm just kidding i love you i'm just kidding do you want a cheese ball um i'd love them i can't believe i'm reaching in there right now <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really know how I can actually react to this in any normal, sane human way, because if I do react to this in my own true emotional manner, I will scream and I will cry, because what is actually going on? Why? Like, seriously, what... What? The worst part is, is, is this isn't even... Well, it, 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 you could say it's the worst part, but there is even other bad and weird and creepy moments. And you compose yourself. Your date can decide if you've had enough chemistry if he wants to give you a little kiss or I would. I, I would be honored. Oh. Oh. I love you. I like James, I love you too. I can't explain it like James, okay. Oh my gosh, this is the best date I've ever been on. So I feel like we should get to know each other a little bit more. Where are you from? Again, um, you're in England, yes? Yeah. England. And how old are you? Nine. Okay. <laughs> so oh. I feel like... I'm sorry, James. You're going to have to wait until you're a little bit older, but give him a round of She said... You're going to have to wait until you're a bit older. And the audience just sat there and clapped. You know why? Because most of them are children. But then the parents are just sat there like, ha ha, really cool. And I'm like, does anyone see what's going on here? Then am I the only one that's witnessing this? This is fucking mental. What? This is a child, a child show. What is going on? But of course, some parents obviously clocked on. Thankfully, as we saw in the thread earlier, parents were taking their children out after they discovered that this was incredibly inappropriate and children should not be exposed to this type of thing. But then shock surprise, ladies and gentlemen, it only gets worse when another person came out speaking about their experience at Miranda Sings Live when they were 14 years old and this happened. All it takes is a little breeze and I'll see all the bits. <laughs> so this is a very good example of what you don't want to dress like. So this is What's your name? Grace. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, first time on his clothing, okay? This is an example. Not Not <laughs> There are two ways to get rid of clothing. One, you can dress like Sarah or me here and look appropriate. The other one is I have created a device that will help my Murfandas. It's called the anti unicorn, okay? So I have these unicorn horns um, that I'm going to wear. And now I am an anti unicorn, okay? So whenever you are seeing anything that is being you can just be like, stop me! <laughs> Hit them right in the areas. Do you really and that'll do the trick, okay? So those are the ways to get rid of you guys understand clothing? Yeah. Okay, good. How many times did she just say that word, adding in the context that everybody at that audience is like 10 years old? Okay, okay, this person in the clip was 14 years old, which is still absolutely insane. I seriously don't understand how this show was actually allowed to go on and why Netflix even gave them a deal. And ladies and gentlemen, there are so many other clips out there from Miranda Sings Live. So many incredibly inappropriate moments where you could go through them for absolutely hours. In fact, the entire show is just built on this foundation of inappropriate behavior whilst Colleen Ballinger uses the defense of, oh, it's just a character, it's just an act. And as I said, that could be applied if you were not bringing on random kids onto the stage to do these weird, inappropriate things. But you may be thinking, okay, well, outside of these weird skits, what else goes on at these shows? Because as we saw at the beginning of the thread earlier, it was mentioned that this was a comedy act, a comedian, and what the comedians like to do but apparently, they tell jokes. So, um, what's an example of the jokes that Colleen was telling at the show? For children, by the way. Now, instead of having a little 
boy. I genuinely don't even have a reaction other than why. It's just really weird and just a really bad or well, good example or whatever you want to call it of pretty much the humor at these shows presented to, again, little children. I I really don't understand the appeal here. Uh, I, I don't understand why a 30-year-old came to these shows out of a place of enjoyment. I don't understand why people would take their parents to their parents, their kids to these shows. It just really doesn't make any sense to me. The entire concept of Miranda Singh live on, on all fronts is just absolutely wrong. But I already know what Colleen's defense will be when it comes to these live shows and the things that are said and done at them that will be, oh, I make jokes for kids and adults. And the reason I know that she will make these excuses is because she already has made this excuse. Don't worry about parents if you were dragged here and you think this is just some dumb YouTuber show. Don't worry, it is. But also... <laughs> I try very hard to make my show enjoyable for everybody. You know, there are jokes for the kids that the kids can laugh at tonight, but I also have a lot of jokes in my show that are a little bit more mature, a little bit inappropriate, that will go over the kids' heads. No offense to you kids, but you guys are dumb. So they'll go over your heads. And then the parents will have something to enjoy tonight too. So don't worry, you'll have fun tonight. Now, Colleen, I would be willing to hear you out if you brought people on stage that are anything other than a child, but the fact of the matter is, is with every single clip that I have seen of Miranda Sings Live, you are only bringing on children onto stage. Now, maybe somewhere out there, there are a few examples of Colleen bringing on an adult. I could not personally find one, but it seems that in every form of interaction that Colleen Ballinger has with a fan in the past, it's always a child. The only reason that a parent is at these shows, for the most part, is because they have been dragged along. I'm pretty sure the only example I could find of somebody who was an adult willingly going to these shows is this person right here. That is one individual in comparison to thousands upon thousands of children. But then I understand that a lot of people will say, well, it's up to the parents to not bring their kids to these shows, or it's just up to the kids to not find this stuff funny. And I can kind of understand that criticism, but at the same time, I feel like Colleen Ballinger definitely has the moral responsibility to not bring kids onto stage and do the thing that I've shown you today. I, I feel like it's a pretty easy thing to ask to not go into the audience and be like, oh, little kid, do you want to come on the, on, the, on the stage? And I'm not even going to describe it because I feel like out of context that would sound incredibly weird and I do not want my neighbors to call the police. But the main reason that I bring these shows up and I think the main reason that this stuff is resurfacing is because it is just a reoccurring pattern of behavior with Colleen Ballinger interacting very strangely with her young fans. It seems that on all avenues from Twitter interactions to real life interactions, she is only inappropriate with fans. She has sent weird DMs, she has sent underwear, and now she has done the things that I have shown you today. It is very inappropriate. It is very wrong. And I would honestly love to hear what she actually has to say to defend these things. Of course, it'll probably be, oh, it was all jokes. It was all laughs and good fun. But honestly, how many times can you say that about everything in this situation? And in fact, the only slight response to criticism when it comes to Colleen shows is, of course, the fart joke, but also a thing that happened at a more recent live show. Because yes, obviously, Colleen has been touring this year and at one of these shows, I believe it was actually her last show, something, in my opinion, again, inappropriate happened. Something which to me just shows that Colleen Ballinger is just outright laughing in the faces of the people affected by her actions and just in general, everybody who has been criticizing Colleen. And the reason I think that is because of this tweet right here from, once again, Adam McIntyre, who tweeted, to all the victims of Colleen Ballinger and her family's emotional abuse slash grooming that have all spoken up this week, just know that she's about to go on stage and perform a show in which she makes fun of cancel culture and people who speak up against her. She does not care about victims. And then it shows a photo of the latest show where on screen there is basically a bunch of screenshots and all of these screenshots are comments, pretty much just criticizing and coming for Colleen Ballinger. And now firstly, ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is an utterly pathetic response from Colleen, but at this point, it's not really a shock, is it? I mean, we've seen the ukulele video, we've seen plenty of things so far in these two documentaries, but I think the main thing we need to focus on here 
here is, of course, the characterization aspect of everything which I've been mentioning throughout this segment. Of course, Colleen likes to use the fact that Miranda sings as a character as a form of defense for her actions. But the problem is, is now we are seeing kind of like the blurred lines between Miranda sings and Colleen Ballinger because these are comments coming for Colleen Ballinger, not Miranda sings. So, what, what, what is it? Is it a character? Is it just Colleen? What am I meant to take from this other than Colleen Ballinger absolutely loves to use this character as a way to inappropriately interact with her fans? But it's also just another case of Colleen's just weird addiction to self-implosion. I, I just don't understand why in every single scenario this woman needs to just, just make everything a million times worse. Because the fact is, she did this at her show, and of course it caused more and more people to look into these live shows and uncover the clips that we have spoken about today, but this also led to more people looking into the character of Miranda Sings and going through some other pieces of media created by Colleen, and that leads into the conversation of her books. Because yes, just like every other YouTuber on the planet, for some reason at one point of time, they, as in Colleen, was convinced that she was going to become an author, i.e. she got a ghostwriter, paid them lots of money, and they published a book. Allegedly, of course. But yes, she wrote a book, and this is pretty much a continuation from these live shows, because these books show just even more inappropriate things from the Miranda Sings character, which is definitely being presented to children. So without further ado, let's get into the next chapter of this video. Now, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, I think we need to just firstly ask the question of why... Why does every single YouTuber release a book? Because they, I, I've got a little problem, right? Because I'm gonna about to give you a little personal story. My honest to god dream job has always to be a bin man. That's that's actually not a joke. For some reason, apparently, when I was four years old, my parents asked me what I what I would love to do or be when I'm older, and apparently, I said bin man. I don't know why, but it's because clearly I'm a respectable man that respects our service workers. But secondly, the job that I kind of really wanted to be when I grew up a bit older is uh, a a, a, a author, but now I face the issues of if I ever write a, a fictional novel, I'm of course going to face the whole criticism of it's just another YouTuber writing a book for profit. And honestly, I can completely understand that. And sadly, I can understand that even more after doing the research into Colleen Ballinger's books. Because, ladies and gentlemen, these things right here, yes, sadly, there are multiple. They are absolute abominations. I don't know why these things exist recently because of obviously the live shows being dug up and people looking into the character and Miranda Sings, people have started to do their research into these books and uncover a lot of incredibly disturbing things and I think we should just pick out some of the the, the, the best bits in these books to once again exemplify the style of content being presented to her child audience. And at this point you also have to understand that we absolutely cannot deny that Colleen Ballinger is aware of her child audience. Just look at the crowd, it's right there. So without further ado, let's get into the first book. Now funnily enough, this book is titled Self Help by Miranda Sings. And it, it's just quite ironic that this is called Self Help because in pretty much every single situation, this person could not help herself. In every single one, she only made it even worse. But apparently she has a book for self-helping goodness. And reminder, child audience. I don't think that any children should be listening to Colleen Ballinger for self help. For the first time ever, YouTube personality Miranda Sings is sharing her life lessons and tutorials on paper when I do not want to see it. I don't need to know the life lessons. Fuck. I, I, I just don't need it. But of her own illustrations and photos, in it, you'll find Miranda's instructions on all you need to know in life. From how to get a boyfriend... I don't even need to, well, we, well we, we will look into that actually, because obviously you know it's going to be incredibly inappropriate. But then it continues and says, wear all black and carry a fishing net. I'm not even going to comment. To performing magic tricks, in brackets, magic is lying, this is a self-declared, life-saving book, and if you don't like it, well, as Miranda would say, haters, back off. And okay, Colleen, I guess I am somewhat of a hater, but um, I'm, I'm going to... 
I, I'm not. I'm, I, I was going to say I'm going to try my best to be fair about this, but I, I'm just absolutely not going to do that. So before we actually look into the context of what's in this book, I feel like we should look at the uh, announcement video that Colleen Ballinger uploaded. I don't know why I keep saying a full name. That Colleen uploaded onto a YouTube channel. And I think it's a real good example of the type of people that would be reading and listening to Colleen Ballinger. Hey guys! It's me, Miranda. So today I have some really exciting news for you. I've just written a book, but I also have written a song about my book. So here it is. This is um, brand new. No one's heard it before. This is an exclusive just for you. So. Oh, my name is Miranda Sings. I am a famous YouTube celeb. I have millions of views online and I'm running for president. Not only that, but now I'm an author, I'm an author. I have written a book called Self Help. And now you can learn all about how to be a better person. You can learn about money. You can learn about fame. You can learn about haters and bullies and fashion and love and all the things like this. So get it now. It's for pre-order on your favorite retailer on MirandaSings.com. Also, it comes out on July 21st. So make sure I get it. So I'm not getting get the book now. Pre-order it. Might Look, I'm not trying to be rude here, and I understand that, yes, there are obviously, like, six adult fans out there somewhere in the world of Colleen Ballinger, but I, I, I can watch that clip and really understand why she has such an audience of children, because basically, if you grow past the age of 18, you know, you grow, you develop, and all that good stuff, you, you should develop tastes, and by taste I mean you just enjoy actually entertaining things. You know, like, when you were a kid, you just fucking laugh at the wall or something. I don't think everybody did that. Some some of us did. I didn't do it. So you don't. You laugh at really unfunny things, and I, I that. I'm just saying, Miranda. I'm I'm not trying to be funny. And Miranda sings is that's not funny. Um, all right, let's just let's just move on. Jack it, I'm sorry, you have to edit this. Basically, the whole thing seems like a Nickelodeon character. Overly expressive, annoying, and just, you know, overly outrageous. It's not something that an adult would exactly be interested in. So yes, let's see what the young people are consuming from the Miranda Sings help book, and it starts off with the first dates section. And basically, yeah, this gives information on how to go about your first dates. And again, I feel like this does actually show who this is being sold to. The, uh, the whole idea of a first first date traditionally is for a younger person because, you know, you go on your first date, you're probably going to be quite young. I mean, unless you're a big loser, not like me. Of course, I'm joking. Uh, if you've never been on a date, I mean, just unlucky, I guess, but um, don't read Miranda's book is what I'm trying to say here. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at what she has to say about going on your first date and how to make it work. And uh, again, I have to say, well, not again, but I have to say, I'm going to blur out some things here and there for copyright reasons, and you'll find out why I have to do that later on in this video. So yeah, Miranda's advice here is pretty much just playing hard to get, saying that it's really good to act uninterested in your first date, leaving him wanting more. Then she gives three step instructions. Number one. Physically punch him, hit them, spit near them, pull a hair. It's really, it's really good advice. It's physical abuse, I, I, I like it. I shouldn't say that. Two, verbally tell them that they are ugly. Okay, so mental abuse as well. And number three, emotionally act uninterested and bored to hurt their feelings. Emotional manipulation, I... I, I, I guess these are the three things that she is giving as advice. Now, of course, I understand this is a comedy book. Well, but the problem is, it's like, is it comedy? Is it really? It's, it's just not. It's just not. But the problem is also, obviously, this book is being presented to children. Children are impressionable. As much as you can say that this is all a comedy thing, especially with what I have read so far and the things that you haven't seen, I just don't really think that this is even a good thing to sell to a kid as a joke. Because we know what kids are like. Kids are absolutely stupid. Colleen knows that. That's why she befriends them. And the problem is, is when they're stupid, they're going to consume this stuff and actually do this stuff. So I, I, I just don't really agree that this should be a book that's being sold and making probably millions of dollars. And yeah, there's also this thing, which is the get a boyfriend kit showing these items and... Yeah, it is. It is really, really weird. But then, shockingly enough, ladies and gentlemen, it only gets even weirder when they start to go on a five-step 
journey thing to touching people in relationships i'm uncomfortable right now and i'm not going to read these five steps you can see some of them right here but all you need to know it ends in saying your first kiss should be like your tongue running across the tender flesh bursting with flavor and lips gushing with juice this is a book written for children by the way oh god and talking of children there's even a chapter in this book solely titled how to do and ladies and gentlemen, I do not feel comfortable shouting that at 10pm in my flat, which is, you know, conjoined to like six other flats. I don't want to be doing this right now. I don't want to be doing this at any other time either, but I'm going to have to be doing it for your sake. So please like this video. And of course, the chapter is, it, it's like a little funny spin on horrible joke again they're jokes but they're presented to children we've seen the audience that's why we've been going through everything in the order that we have we've seen the audience we've seen how she acts to the audience this is just how she acts with kids it's weird it's inappropriate and it is of course this weird continuous pattern of behavior remember in her apology video that she said that at the beginning of a youtube career she didn't know how to present boundaries i mean it, it seems that just in her entire life she doesn't know how to present boundaries in particular boundaries with children this is really really weird. But then the weirdness only continues in this child-friendly book with things such as how to cuddle and positions being presented as 69 and uncle being shown. And there's also sections such as how not to be and other innuendos and ladies and gentlemen this is of course just a brief look into this book but honestly if i was to read this entire thing i i feel like i'd i, w I wouldn't I, I was going to say some up, which honestly for YouTube TOS, I'm, I'm not going to say it, but maybe, you know, talking of dark humor, you can maybe understand where I was going with it. But um, yeah, the, the book's awful. It's, it's a big, and I'm not just talking because of the, oh, the ethical reasons. The book is just a pile of shit. It's not good. It's it's not it's not good, and I, I don't want to be spending my days reading it. But unfortunately, there is other books that we have to go through. But the important thing to take from this is, yes, this is only humor that children would laugh at. Like the dark, edgy humor isn't funny, and the children children are only laughing at it is because they probably don't understand it. You know when you're kids and you, and you know something is inappropriate and you'll just laugh at it for that reason? That's exactly what the Miranda Sings character is. And when I see adults genuinely enjoying the character, I honestly do get confused because why? Have you have you not grown up past that stage in your life? I, I'm sorry if I mean I'm not, but I, I'm going to pretend to be sorry. I'm going to lie to you right now and say I'm sorry if I'm offending you about this, but I, I just don't personally understand it. To me personally, I just see this book as another case of Colleen Ballinger's weird obsession of acting inappropriately with children. I don't know what it is, but she just seems to do it in every form of media that she's involved in. And it's clear that I'm not the only person with this take. I mean, the entire internet is cancelling this woman currently, but it, it seems that even years ago, before the grand cancellation of Colleen Ballinger, I don't know why I'm speaking so fast right now. I feel like I've taken crack, but I haven't. I, I ate a load of ice cream, so maybe I'm having a sugar rush. But basically, the parents also, a few years ago, were not happy. As you can see, one out of five stars, not appropriate for an eight-year-old or my 12-year-old. So basically, these people clearly thought, oh, I'm buying a book, my kids are going to love it. They watch Colleen Ballinger Miranda Sings all the time. And then they discovered the chapter of how to do children and how to not put... I'm not even going to say those in the same sentence. I'm, I'm not going to do that, but you know what I'm saying. It's it, it's it's weird. And the fact that parents are having to even realize this after buying it for their kids, it, it's even more insane. Bought this book based on a 4.5 out of 5 star rating review rating. I, I just said that twice. I should have read all the reviews before buying this for my 8-year-old daughter. Yeah, you probably should have actually read the book before you bought it for your or just gave it to your 8-year-old daughter. Maybe you should have done that. The due diligence of a parent. And I'm not defending Colleen Ballinger here. Obviously, she knows the audience that she caters to and interacts with. But obviously, maybe just read the book before you give it to your kids. It's, it's, I mean, it's not that hard. But then after this, it basically just goes on to list all of the innuendos in the book and how inappropriate it was and how they feel totally wrong on so many levels for their eight-year-old for, for reading this because they are at an impressionable age. And they're so glad that they read it before letting them read it and... Uh, Oh. All aboard! Yeah, it seems like I was wrong. Um, 
Sorry, I guess, but basically, the, but my point stands, all right? The review is saying everything that I've been saying. This is incredibly inappropriate, and I, I, I just don't understand why this is being marketed to children. As you can see, they're pointing out their things that I pointed out. It's it's just uncomfortable. It's just wrong, but this also isn't the only review, and again, I'm, I'm really sorry. Warning to parents, do not buy this book for your children. We bought it for Leah. Hiya, Leah. Hope you're doing well after being a fan of Miranda Sings. As it is marketed for children. The reviews by parents having bought this really funny book for their young children. However, the book contains references to having special con- Oh god, cuddles with your your uncle riding daddy's saddle. P-O-R-N, 69 with your boy having special places to go with your uncle. They, yeah, you can see that they're basically not very happy and gave it a one star out of five stars. And they're, they're all the reasons that I've mentioned earlier, but they've obviously gone into a bit more specific detail. They didn't understand YouTube TOS. But obviously, their point very much stands. I do not understand why this book is so clearly being, you know, marketed to children. You can say that it's not Colleen Ballinger, but just look at the front cover. This is so obviously designed to look like a kid's book. You can't lie to me. This is an adult book. Book. This is a kid's book. And I don't care what you say. Dune is cool, alright? Leave me alone. Oh, the man baby likes sci-fi books. Yeah. And what? But also, as I said, this is not the only book that is being sold by Miranda Sings currently, and the other books also include a lot of inappropriate content, and in fact, they include content which actually play into some of the things that I mentioned in my first documentary video. Because obviously, in that video, I mentioned the whole thing about Colleen Ballinger bragging about getting her dog put down years ago, and Colleen, you know, speaking about this in her 2020 response, where she pretty much just outright lied about the entire thing, but I'm going to play the old clip of Colleen bragging about what she did to her dog. I used to like actually like rip things up or get angry. So I grabbed my dog for no reason, just grabbed the dog and pinched its skin and dug my nails into it. The dog yelps, turns around to protect itself and bites me in the face. And I got stitches, I went to the hospital and they were like, what happened? And I was like, the dog just bit me. And then they had to put the dog to sleep because the dog was dangerous to be around. So I murdered a dog. Now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is, you know, absolutely heinous and disgusting and just damn right creepy. But uh, this is what happened, apparently, according to Colleen Ballinger. And the thing is, is uh, this seems to not really be the only case of this. Now, we have to go back to the whole characteristics thing here of Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings. Are they the same person? Because it seems that Miranda Sings is only a character when it's beneficial to Colleen Ballinger. But when it comes to responding to haters, uh, they're the same person. So again, I can understand with what some people will respond to when it comes to what I'm about to show you. And I, I will get into that in a second. But let's take a look at what I'm about to show you. Pretty much in her second book, My Diarrhea, there's sections about her snake where she says, this snake is dumb, he wouldn't stay on my neck like a necklace, so I set him free by flushing him down the toilet. And then there is a letter being shown from her school after this about how Miranda accidentally flushed her hamster down the toilet. And then there is also at the bottom an editor note from, I guess, adult Miranda where she confirms Mrs. Zellert, who I think is the teacher in question here, is a liar, flushing that hamster was not an accident. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I, I do hope that this is a fictional story for the love of God, but based on the fact that we don't know when it is a character or when it isn't a character, and based on the fact she has a history of actually on-screen bragging about killing her dog, am I meant to, like, not believe that these are real stories? Again, you could say that, yeah, obviously it is, it, it is a fictional story, but again, the blurred lines thing, is it a character, isn't it a character? Obviously it's a character, but she does use the character to hit back at people criticizing her, so why would she not use the character to speak about her life stories? It reminds me of Onision and Shane Dawson. They both have books where they use characters as a way to present their actual real-life life stories stories, and those life stories were really, really weird. But the reason they use those stories is because they can say it's a fictional story, and maybe it was real, but in their mind, they know that they can get away with it out of the whole premise of fiction. And Colleen, we wouldn't have this issue if you didn't use your character to attack people criticizing Colleen Ballinger. Again, it's another example of self-implosion, because now I'm kind of hypothesizing, did she, you know, flush a snake down the toilet? 
Probably not, but you see my point here. I think maybe the hamster one could be true based on the whole dog story. I feel like a hamster being flushed away is, you know, it may be a bit more probable. But alas, what I'm trying to say here is the content is inappropriate and it's also creating issues that Colleen herself has created of not understanding, is this a real story or is it a fake story? And ladies and gentlemen, this isn't exactly just a Colleen Ballinger thing. There is a lot of cases where famous people of where they create characters and they do use their character as a way to respond to real life things and real life criticism and situations. I guess it is somewhat considered art by people, but personally in the way that Colleen has done it, I feel like it's more just her using Miranda's things as an excuse. And that can be said about everything that we've gone through when it comes to the Miranda Sings character. Why is a book being sold to a child with things like this and this, and even just the funny idea of, of, of flushing animals down the drain and stuff like that. Why is this being presented to kids? I, I personally just think it's a really weird thing to do. And if this wasn't written by a ghostwriter, and I actually honestly, for Colleen's sake, hope it was, why would you write this? I mean, it, it's not even like a fun kid's book. I mean, these are meant to be kid's books, you know? Fun little things where you get lost in the world. But your book is just, ha ha, I killed my hamster, ha ha. My uncle did uh, 69, ha, ha, and all these other weird things. It, to me personally, it just seems that Colleen is really interested in doing everything she can to be inappropriate with children. And this book is just, again, another avenue, just like her live show was. But of course, we know when it comes to responding to these things, if we actually ever do get a response, it'll be, oh, you know, it's all out of context. It's, it's, they were funny jokes, and yeah, they've aged badly because the internet's sensitive nowadays. And, and yes, the the internet is very sensitive nowadays to some things, but this, I think it's, there's a lot of valid criticism here, and I think it will just all come under the whole thing of Colleen Ballinger is absolutely terrible when it comes to accountability, and I think that shows here, here, and here. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that does lead us into our final chapter of the conclusion of the downfall and ending of the career of Colleen Ballinger. That, is that even a good chapter name? Probably not. If, if the chapter name's changed, there you go. So ladies and gentlemen, we are finally at the ending of our journey. For now, because there's probably, let's be, let's be real, there's probably going to be a part three, because she's got to make a response eventually, but I feel like the way to actually kind of wrap everything up is actually with more questions, because I feel like questions are things that can answer our own thoughts right now. So I am going to ask myself some questions and present you my own answers. And the first question obviously being, is the internet being a little bit too mean and too harsh on Colleen Ballinger right now? No, ov obviously not. And I feel like this is something I've seen quite a lot of people say. Whenever somebody gets criticized quite a lot on the internet for doing something absolutely heinous, you get a lot of people being like, mental health guys, you all claim to be mental health advocates, but now you're being really mean. I'm not being mean. Well, okay. I have been a little bit mean, but I feel like it's justified. I'm not hoping anything bad happens. I'm not hoping that this causes some form of mental breakdown, but I am hoping for actual levels of accountability and not lies. The problem is, is every single time Colleen has responded to something, it's been lies, deceit, and manip manipulation, and taking things out of context, and just the worst of the worst, and making things a million times worse. I can't personally say that the internet is being too mean to Colleen Ballinger, when she herself just can't give an honest statement. Because even with her apology video, it's only gotten worse. Yes, somehow, somehow, the worst apology of all time is now getting even worse. You didn't think it was possible, but ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> she's, she's copyrighted the song and she is going around copyright claiming people criticizing the apology in her video. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, pretty much H3H3, the, 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 the beloved man, made a tweet saying that his video was copyright claimed because it basically contained the, the apology video. And as you can see, the copyright claimant is right there. It is Colleen. It is her company. And she... I, I, 
I, I don't have words to describe how absolutely insane this is. So basically, how she's done this is she's put the song on Spotify, Apple Music, and I imagine she's added some form of copyright claimant to it, and she is now going round striking people, apparently, taking their form of monetization. And there is a whole load of things we need to discuss here. Because firstly, is this even legal? When people made their videos criticizing the apology, there was no copyright on the apology and now they're getting copyrighted for something which has been copyrighted in the future on something that they made in the past. It really doesn't make much sense to me and I genuinely don't understand how this happens but this is outright such an abuse of the copyright system which leads into an even bigger conversation on its own about how creators who are getting criticized weaponize this system so Often there is I show speed for example who had an entire video done on, on his copyright abuse recently And there are plenty of other content creators like Onision which weaponize it on a daily basis I can't make a video criticizing Onision where I show his videos anymore Because he will copyright claim the video and the reason that this happens is because one they want your money But two it is a great silencing tool because ladies and gentlemen I I, I don't care if this sounds bad I need to make money from this video. This is my living. I make YouTube videos for my job. And that might sound absolutely insane. You may say, Fraser, that's your fault. And if you do think that, fair enough, sunshine. I, I will wish you well off into the sunset. But personally, I would like to make money to pay my bills and stuff from, from this video. I've put so much time into these documentaries, so much time into my videos. Me and Jacket work tirelessly on these videos, so we can't just not make money on them. I have people to pay, bills to pay, stuff like that. And the reason that this is a silencing tool is because if I'm not making money on these long-ass videos, which take time and effort, then there's, there's going to be a, a thing which says in my mind, is it worth even making? Because you won't be able to pay your employees you won't be able to pay your bills your rent stuff like that and i think this is a deliberate act when people get copyright striked their pocket gets affected now obviously i am still going to upload this video out of the fear that it makes no money and people like h3h3 will be fine if they don't make money on their colleen ballinger videos but of course there are a lot of other content creators who solely do re rely on it on a video to video basis of that money pays for their bills their food, their editors, their everything, you know? And this is a deliberate thing to stop these people from making these videos in the first place on Colleen Ballinger. It's sick, it's twisted, and it's disgusting. And when you thought this individual, I said it like an hour ago, where I'm pretty sure I said, I don't know how she can get even worse. But ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, she has gotten even worse. She is despicable. I mean, she was before, but this is just insane. She's now coming after the people in her own space. Do you understand how insane that is? And then even after this, despite this being a money thing, a, a, a stopping people from speaking thing, this also will have repercussions on the fact that more and more people will start abusing this copyright system. So this is a, now a message to YouTube to fix this, to stop this, to actually protect your content careers in the name of not just free speech, but fair use. This is a genuine problem which keeps on happening and now is being abused by one of the top content creators. And you can say that Colleen Ballinger isn't anymore, but I'm sorry, this video got millions upon millions of views. She is a known content creator, she is known by practically everyone at this point, and this person is being actively allowed to abuse this system. Now, maybe by the time this video comes out, it will get rectified as a mistake or something, but ladies and gentlemen, I, I refuse to believe that this was a mistake, especially the channel that was here. H3H3, one of the most outspoken mother out there. This guy speaks about everybody. I think this is a deliberate thing, a coordinated thing, designed to put fear into people. Right now, I haven't been struck, but maybe when this goes up, I might have. So, just in general, I, I appreciate your support. <laughs> if you finish this video, please go watch my other ones to, to help me out. But, um, yeah, pretty much, this is just another disgusting thing from Colleen, and I'm sorry it turned into a bit of an unscripted rant. But, Fraser, from the future here, basically, there's been an update to this, and my prediction seems like that's kind right. Pretty much, Colleen's PR team has come out and said that they did not 
put this strike down. This was not them, and it was somebody else. And obviously, the entire internet now is now saying that this is once again another mistruth, another lie from Colleen Ballinger. Now, maybe it wasn't Colleen, maybe it was, but based on the fact that it says Colleen Ballinger, I'm gonna be inclined to personally believe that I think some suspicious things have happened here. But also, I have more reason for that. Basically, I didn't mention this, I've been holding on to this information, but randomly, one of my videos was copyright claimed by a company that Colleen Ballinger is a part of. As you can see here, I got this copyright claim for using content from Colleen Ballinger, so this indicates to me that Colleen, or the company that she is with at least, have a continuous pattern of copyright claiming people. When you search this company's name on Twitter, it comes up with other creators complaining that they have been copyright claimed for using content from creators under their umbrella. So clearly, even if this thing wasn't actually Colleen, she is still guilty of being a part of this sort of copyright abuse, and personally, based on all of the lies, I can completely understand why the internet is not believing this whatsoever, but also, it's just another indication of how unserious Colleen is. She is once again speaking to the media about another thing which really isn't that relevant in the grand scheme of everything that we've been speaking about. Yes, it has deeply upset me, but ultimately, compared to all of the major allegations, I cannot believe that these are the ones that she has been focusing on and I think that's because she actually has no real good response to anything. And now ladies and gentlemen, the next point I was actually going to speak about after this was is Colleen Ballinger ever going to apologize for her actions? And based on everything we've seen, I genuinely think she might actually not. Maybe there will be another response, but I definitely don't think it's going to be an outright apology. And if it is, it just contradicts all of her actions and behavior and to be honest with you no matter what she says i cannot believe that apology based on everything that we've spoken about the lies the manipulation now the abuse of the copyright system i just cannot believe any apology that she puts out. And that is exactly why I haven't waited for her to respond before making this video. I genuinely don't care at this point. I think she is a liar and a manipulator and just in general, a bad person. I don't call everybody that I speak about on my channel a bad person usually, but in this case, I'm genuinely starting to get angry at this person, which is actually quite surprising. I'm a calm guy usually, but based on everything, she is pressing every single button at this point and it is just out right embarrassing. But talking of embarrassing, the final point I want to end this on is Colleen Ballinger's horrific tour that we went through in this video seemingly has now been cancelled. And why is this? Well, I, I can just guess the fact that probably if she was to host another a, a, another show, well, basically, in the uh, in the old times, when, when people were getting mocked in the public, tomatoes would be thrown. And I'm not saying anyone should do that, of course, but I'm saying that we probably would be in a situation like that if another show happened. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's it's now been cancelled. It's very funny to see. And it's probably for financial reasons too, because nobody would actually go to these terrible shows. And honestly, I think this is a win for children in general, because now they're not going to have to be traumatised and embarrassed on stage in front of people who are laughing at them whilst Colleen Ballinger profits off their pain and suffering. And yeah, that might sound a little bit deep, but to be honest with Colleen Ballinger, you're profiting off my pain and suffering by claiming people's videos on youtube.com, but I will conclude this video by saying, this saga has genuinely been absolutely insane to me. It's genuinely so crazy to see somebody just self-implode on every single aspect, and I will keep on saying that because it seems that in every single chapter, it only continues with the self-implosion behavior. Look, Colleen, I know that, you know, the submarine went 50,000 feet down below in the ocean and it exploded, but you didn't need to cosplay the submarine, Colleen. You gotta stop self-imploding at every single angle. You didn't need to do this, this or this, but you just choose to do it every single time. And just overall, it's actually quite incredible to see how one individual can do so much heinous things. As we've gone through this video alone, not just including my first video with the creepy group chats and the bad interactions of Adam McIntyre, Cody, and plenty of other individuals, there is so much just here, with Trisha Paytas, for example, sending the photos that she did to other individuals who were underage. There is just so much with Colleen Ballinger that it just completely and utterly shocks me, even though at the same time I really shouldn't be shocked, because at the end of the day, after five 
hours of content, it just seems that this person is on an absolute mission to ruin their own career, but I guess that just is the tragic tale of Colleen Ballinger. This is the most self-inflicted, self-imploded, whatever you want to call it story I have ever seen, and I have nothing but best wishes for the people that have been impacted by Colleen's actions, because after five hours, it's so clear that so many people, whether you're friends of this person, enemies of this person, just anyone that's interacted with this person, has been negatively impacted by this person. I by no means want this to turn into some form of harassment campaign, but ultimately, there are so many situations that have been manipulated by Colleen, skewed by Colleen, lied about by Colleen, that obviously there is just so much here that we need to talk about. This video alone started as a 30 minute response video to everything that happened after my first video and it has now become another documentary and I think that's the perfect way to summarize Colleen Ballinger. Just a complete self implosion. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. It, uh, I, I don't even know at this point where to go from here. Am I meant to now go and just make videos on other things again? Like 30 minute videos after two documentaries? I guess so. Um, if there's anything you guys want me to speak about that I've missed over the last month, please, please, please tweet me, DM me on Instagram. I, I, I won't reply with... Uh, all the things that Colleen was replying with. I will say thank you, good sir, for the idea, and I will move on with my day. Um, but also, if you could comment ideas down below, that's probably the best thing to do, because I'll probably more likely see that, because I actually don't really check my Instagram PMs. But alas, thank you very much for watching this, whatever this is. I, I, it's, it's been a long journey. There's no script right now. I'm just speaking off the cuff. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. And firstly... Firstly, this is ending now. Why am I saying firstly like we haven't been here for three hours? Lastly, big thank you to my editor, Jacket. She is an absolute gem, and I know that they have been pretty much just working as hard as they possibly can at this whole series thing, whatever you want to call it. So I want you to go down to the comment section, give her some love, comment everything nice that you can think of, all the words in the English dictionary, do it right now. I'm, I'm not on screen right now, so Jacket can be showing absolutely anything. This could be her Twitter account, it could be whatever, their music. Just, just go, just go do it, follow it. Tweet this photo of Phil Mitchell at Jacket right now, and I'll very much appreciate that. But I'm also going to end this by promoting my podcast. I've got to promote something of mine. And, and yeah, please follow the Buddies podcast. We're going to be releasing a very late episode where we react to the apology. I understand, but like two weeks late, just shut up. Just go subscribe. It's in the description. Or it might, might be up next. I don't know. Probably. I'm just tired. I want to go to bed. So I'm, I'm going to say like, subscribe. Um, and don't forget to brush your teeth twice a day three times a day it's up to you Ray. i don't care bye bye everybody peace out have a nice day